Hello there everyone and welcome back to the long series on Tiano, the state of Guangdong. I'm your host, Mr. Guangdong Dong Dong Lover, but 1952 Part 5. All over the newspaper, all over the radio. The shootout at Chao Zhu had given Lam his five minutes of fame. Besides his hospital bed, a radio set blared his achievements as an exemplar for what they call a Zhu Jin. He sat up in his bed and looked around him. The air smelled sickly, faint, sterile. Lam was in his, in his hospital room. The doctors wrapped a caster on his right shoulder where a bullet had struck. Pale sunlight filtered through the window facing west. A low fog hung over the rope, uh, Pearl River Delta, obscuring the ships that piled its wide waterways. A knock on the door. Come in, Lamb said. A doctor, a nurse, and the Japanese inspector entered the room. The Japanese inspector was beaming with pride. Shook Lamb's hand vigorously. Congratulations, he said, Officer Hayashi. That discovery simply, simply astounding. He took a bundle of envelopes from his coat and showed them to Lamb. Here, look, combinations. Well wishes from up the office. Lamb blinked. What about the operation? Did everything go well? See it for a few of our own. The triad cell in Choshu was wiped out. Despite the sour note of the news, Inspector remained uncharacteristically cheerful. Your technique, the chosen Kozen technique, as we call it in the office, has drawn the attention of the chief executive himself. Imagine that, Hayashi. A Guangdong police force with all the funding in the world without compromises. I see, Lam did not know how to feel. Pride, perhaps satisfaction, he fought hard to keep his logic clear. He coughed. What's next for us? For you, Officer Hayashi, a few interviews in the newspaper and on the radio help us. Help us make this place better for you, for me. Something resembling hope washed over Lam, like curtains of purifying flame. He nodded, giving in. Giving up. Playback. We can't do this. Uh, they'll take everything and leave us with nothing. Chief Executive Morita Wash as Director Morita Akeo but faced a line of stone-faced executives at a conference table. The cold winter light slicing through the window blinds and casting sharp shadows across the room. Director Morita's hair was so black, even his streaks of gray were noticeably visible. That detail betrayed the setting of Morita's resurrected memory, the end of Tokyo Telecommunications in February of 1952. Some executives looked at their hands, preferring to wallow in silent shame. A few stared at the wall behind Morita. Their minds already set. Only one, Ibuka Masoru. Look, Morita and I. We've been all over this, Akeo. The Zaibatsu banks won't lend to us. We begged every yen we could from the family and friends, Ibuka said. A steely glare visible behind his glasses. It's not enough. Fujitsu is the only one who gave us our project a chance. Our project, Morita shot back. Not theirs. We can give the world a radio that fits in a pocket. You want to hand it over to the geriatrics at Fujitsu? They're offering us money and talent when nobody else will, Ibuka replied. Jaws clenched. Uh, that's not good enough for you? No, Morita shook his head. It's not. Silence. Chief Executive Morita felt a chill between the founder of the Tokyo Telecommunications plunge past zero as Ibuka's lips switched. A flash of the condensating, condescending arrogance that would become more evident la years later in Guangdong before he called the board a vote. Morita woke up before leaving his final disgrace, or living his final disgrace, being fired and fleeing Japan. Oh boy. Nice. And we're doing quite well here. We're the police are dominant across, across, across Guangdong as we were still working on our uh, thing over there, uh, Silicon Delta uh, product, product thing. And we need more product quality, but you know, what else is new? Uh, corruption is still pretty high, but uh, some of you come say, yeah, gotta reduce it. I know. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Into the ranks, though. Hotline for petty corruption. If you want to read this again, please go ahead. But when we want a professional in the police force, we definitely want to get down there, so. <clears throat> so if you want to read this again, like we were in the last episode, please go ahead. But it's only June, and we're doing, we're doing okay. You know, it could be better, but we're doing okay. Um, anything else that we can really do yet? Not quite. I don't mind doing the small ones. I guess we can do this one. We need more product quality as is. It's not worth spending that much political power on it, but that's okay. Overall, not bad. 1969. Nothing could go badly, right? Absolutely nothing could go poorly with uh, the world economy soon, right? That's right. That's 100% right. 5%? Uh, is it really worth it? We're already at 92.5. I don't mind 7.5%, but... Ah, uh, this one? Yeah, that sounds really great. This one? 3% more support? Sure, why not? End of the ranks, colleagues. They're even shuffling around division heads? And uh, and look at all those captains besides. Surely these or shuffles didn't happen all the time? Zongman. The newcomer uh, officer, Lamb had befriended a few weeks ago, looked as wide eyes as a deer in the headlights. And he had every right to be. Lamb could remember the last commissioner ever ordering a reshuffle in the first place. Um, <clears throat> and this reshuffle seemed to have displaced almost all of Lamb's old colleagues. He could recognize maybe one in every 30 as an officer from Koshu, but most seemed to become from the cities outside of Koshu entirely. Oh boy. It's lucky that at least we gotta stick together, Lam right, Lamb? Yeah, Amori was dead serious in that speech he made. This reshuffle was meant to break apart those corruption rings we can't cop so much. Uh, Flack for keep the informants separated from the people they were informing. And if I had a guess, some of the newcomers are secret police meant to infiltrate us and weed out anybody that might get involved in bribery or such. I believe some bureaucrats are even getting the same treatment we are. It was important that Lamb encouraged Zong. The band had only spent a couple weeks in the forest and was easily impressionable. Seeing the station turned on its head just after he finally settled in would 
Be shocking enough as is, let alone having to worry about some secret police force inside of it. Would anything even get done with such a patchwork police force? It's interesting, and it's probably the best move Amori could have made. So now we are at what? 92 and a half. Um, so nothing about interest. We could increase it by this much, or we could spend 25 political power and get it up to max out at interest. Would that be best use for political power? Probably not. Anything for seven and a half? Uh, that was corruption, but I, re I refuse to touch corruption at this point now. Um, you know what? It's still better to do than doing these twice, so. We'll max out at 100. Screw it. Land of opportunity. The chief executive sat back in his comfortable office chair. The ghost of a smile on his lips. It just received a call from Tokyo informing that negotiations with America had concluded and measured trade with the OFM would not be allowed. Ooh! The opportunity this presented Guangdong was incredible. The market of one of the world's superpowers had just opened its doors to goods from Guangdong. Oh my god. Everyone would benefit from this. Uh, Sony, Fuji Fujitsu, Matsushita, and everyone else was salivating the prospect of their sale figures skyrocketing in America. The prospect was so promising one might be tempted to say that it was too good to be true. Well, that thought would not be entirely incorrect. While it's true that the American markets presented themselves tremendous opportunity, it also promised great difficulties. The scars of the Second World War were very, so very apparent, and many Americans bore grudges against Japan for their defeat. Sure, the mere passage of the trade deal was already becoming a political issue, and the entry of goods made in Guangdong and other members of the sphere are sure to create a backlash that could lead to boycotts and protests that threaten any investments in America. Yep. The great men of Guangdong were no stranger to adversity. America was a stagnant market, waiting to be disrupted by new ideas and new products. Regardless of where they came from, the greater the challenge, the greater the profits. No risk too great. Oh, we have to do America, right? Of course, we could, like someone said, we could sell to no uh, particular market, but uh, we gotta do America. Japan won't like it, but profitability. 145%. We're going to America. Small and portable, fully electronic. Japanese won't like it. The go Papa government won't, but... Cracked on petty corruption. Oh! Uh, uh, one and a half percent is not much. But change is a quarter of a percent, so... And we can't do anything else here for now. Why not? <clears throat> the Organized Crime Bureau probably won't do this one. We, c we just keep decreasing Japan's approval of us. Or increase it as well. Resistance growth speed. Less attack, though. Uh, police boxes. Increases Japan's speed. Japan's approval, I mean... Organized Crime Bureau. A popular joke among the cadets in the 18 Ocean Park goes like this. Guangdong is a stern example of Pan-Asian harmony. Every man of every race lives and does in accordance with the other. The Yakuza pretend their opium is medicine, the tribes pretend their migrants are legal, and the businessmen pretend their money's clean, and we pretend to arrest them all. Even if bringing them to task were popular, however, the Guangdong police force is ill-equipped to do so. Curtailing organized crime requires a certain acumen and experience, and both have been steadily weeded out from their ranks ever since their refashionment and the Kenpai Test glorified auxiliaries. Change in those regards begins by bringing certain retirees back into the force. Those promising ones recruits dismiss and sideline after burying their noses where they shouldn't. With them, the new commissioner promises reckoning for the high-class misfits Guangdong Zoli underbelly. Yes, please. Nave support, helicopters, planes, why not? 43 days left. Um, where are we at now? 75%. It's not bad. Ah, I'll do it by one. If we can sell to America, we must. Where are we at? 68%. That's pretty decent, not gonna lie. 83%. Captain 8, 95%. Zujin don't like us as much now. Oh, hello. They took this over. I hate the Yakuza. Come on, man. Mm, 69. I grab that one. They sound the treaty port. Or treaty. Not the treaty port, the treaty. Advancements in computational pow power technology? Yes, please. <coughs> Research speed, nice. Very good, very good, very good. Retreat and political power. We could spend it and get this place back. We probably want the corruption thing done. Uh, we'll wait. Control of Guangdong is divided, which is not ideal. Mm, fine. Eighty percent incredible. The matter of police professionalism. Commissioner Amori of the Guangdong's police found an out-of-the-way conference room immune to peeping eyes and oversensitive ears to discuss the matter of professionalism. The Guangdong police force with his two superiors, the chief executive Morita Akeo and Li Kaxing. Uh, Amori opened the discussion. We all know why that my policemen struggle with keeping order even without the rogue variable that is a thrice darn camp type running around all over the place. The brutes. 
They're shamelessly violent, brutish, and uncaring of the rule of law or the contempt. The concept of somebody being innocent until they are proven guilty. Honestly, it makes me want to vomit. All the more when I realize that the rampage is actively harming and delegitimize us, our authority, and all the hard work you and I put in. At this point, Amori drank a glass of water and continued. Mr. Amori, uh, Mr. Lee, if we want to see an end to this, and a camp I tie kept in their barracks, and my police free to take their place, it would require a whole host of reforms. All these changes put together are going to cost money. Murdy looked at Lee. I know. We'll look at the budget and see what we can provide to you, Commissioner. Amori nodded hopefully. Mm hmm. Increased police presence. We kind of like that. Everyone's saying more police. That'd be really good. As uh, been observed in the multilingual societies throughout the history, the people who speak, uh, who matter, speak one language, while the people who matter slightly less speak another. Complications arise when both compromise and law enforcement agencies. Such a divide has caused officers and civilians both tragedy and grief in Guangdong. More than one plea for help was left unheeded because of the officer on duty understood no Cantonese, and native policemen were often dispatched to the wrong locations because the orders were written and told in Japanese. To remedy the divide, Chief Executive Marita's authorized extensive bilingual training programs for all policemen regardless of rank. The usual suspects hem and haul over its costs as usual, so needs CEO tunes them out. Yes, please. Of course, we get that one as soon as this is done, too. Twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. Well, I should have not clicked on that one below us, but whatever. So, almost a hundred percent. You know, I don't mind lowering support maybe a little bit if we can just get a hundred percent. So, that'd be twelve and a half. Eh. Twelve and a half. That'd be ninety-seven and a half. Extreme profitability here in America, 145%. Yeah, that ain't bad. All right. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Oh, increased admin efficiency. Look at that. That's great too. We're looking really good now. Oh my God, we started off. Uh, n not so great shape. I mean, it was okay, but we have more political power, recruitable population, 10% more stability, more ideology, direct defense, supply range, more taxable population factor, better social cost, uh, social program cost factor, and needed consumer goods. Holy crap, we get more than two political power a day? Oh my lord. Alright, let's see what happens, my friends. Reaching average of 98.75% in, uh, product cycle, uh, those two. The ICC 500 electronic calculator. <coughs> Computers are, the same name implies, designed to handle complex computational problems. The widespread adoption of government and business has made the co complex bulk calculations necessary to the function of modern economy much easier. With the kind of small calculations accountants and stockbrokers make dozens of times every day, calculations still have to be done by hand. That changes today with the launch of Sony's new ICC 500 electronic calculator. While well, it's also a bulk disk, 0.3 kilograms, it can, only, it can fit on an average office desk and handle calculations up to 14 digits nearly instantaneously. <coughs> It will be necessary tool for anyone working in finance or any other arena that requires regular calculations. The abacus is finally obsolete. We gain one more Chong Kong seat, two more Sony seats, product cycle 3.57% real GDP growth, eight and a, over 8.5% GB growth, 1.789 billion in miscellaneous income, and decreases Japanese approval, so we, we don't care. Beautiful, my friends. You know what, we'll show it, and then we'll close it. fan flippin' tastic my friends. And that also decreases Japanese expat support a little bit, and decreases Japan support, but whatever. It decreases corruption as well, but it does help with mo monthly military professionalism change, so... Language training. Everyone think it's more police control, too? Police boxes? I do want to get through here, too. Eventually. Do the small thing right. Uh, well, increase Japan's approval. <laughs> New rules of engagement. Cops patrol the streets in ones and not, not twos uh, because the past experience taught them that shakedowns are easier without a second witness. Cops detain people longer than legal than because Sergeant said it's the best way to get what they want to hear. Much of that petty corruption within the Guangdong police force is embedded in its procedures and pre precedents like so. Hence why you'll barely get more than a helpless shrug when you ask an officer why they keep misplacing evidence. Why they keep beating helpless suspects up? Because of them, so how it's always been. It's how it's, it always pays the bills. Change of protocols mandate two brothers per beat. Define as strict limits on the use of force. Enforce uh, appropriate custody durations for every felony, offense, and misdemeanor. And corruption in the ranks will plummet. Not completely, but appreciably. 
Mark Turbulence. Morito Akea was conducting a telephone meeting with one of the ranking executives of the newly formed Sony of America, discussing the nature of the American market and what consumers responded to positively and what they did not care for in a better tailor Sony's marketing efforts to break into the American market. Our um, current efforts are centered around the West Coast. <clears throat> As we continue to expand our operations or, and look to provide services and products to other regions, we must be ready to take into account differences in regional cultural necessities, Executive explained to Morita. This has all been very encouraging news, Marita began, but every new venture has had its fair share of obstacles. What difficulties have you experienced thus far? Well, the executive said, his voice showing the slightest bit of discomfort. There are many consumers on the side of the ocean that are not happy to see any Japanese-linked businesses setting up shop in the neighborhood. The national sector of the National Progressive Pact has been inciting dangerous stunts in the seas with Sydney of America locations. They are demanding they be expelled from the country or leave voluntarily. I see, Marita said. Say, the current chorus, and monitor the protests closely. Our sales matter, but we cannot ignore the safety of our company, assets, or our employees, especially when replacing anything in America is so difficult. All of the things will settle down. 22% real growth. Or just, yeah, just that's freaking amazing. Um, like I said, this one's next. So we're getting closer. The triads have quite a bit of influence, which is not good. With a new bureau. Commissioner Omori Khan of the Guangdong Police took an appreciative look at the dossier in front of him. It contained personal files for the people who formed the core of his new organized crime bureau. The dossier was not that thick, and that was good for good reason. These new officers had to, had to meet a harsh set of qualifications. Qualifications. They had to be incorruptible. Not with them falling victim to bribery, honeypots, or quid pro quos. They had to be single and physically fit, and preferably good fighters. Or more reflected on similar jobs he had seen done against the Yakuza in Japan and the unique stresses of the workplace and people. This fact, combined with the unique political environment of the Guangdong, where Stanley Ho and his tribes had to be left alone as a co cooperating element, made a job that not just anyone could work on, and as a result, there were a few candidates, even the ones who had been named, uh, ran the risk of falling short. But Amori thought it was more difficult. It was more than worth the difficulty. If he help keep organized crime and hanger arms under control in places where the public could see them, he could embarrass camp outside dudes and their supposedly omnipresent intelligence networks. That conference was surely interrupted, however, when Amori realized that if he didn't have enough men, he wouldn't be able to move as fast or as effectively as, say, the camp outside and the military garrison. With that, the intrusive thought rolling in his mind, Amori decided, keep the standards, there can be no other way. Help re progress reform the Guangdong police force. Less political power. Oh, crap. Uh, okay. Or sure, I can settle for good enough. Make you better use of resources elsewhere. Fine. Eighty-four percent assimilation is going quite quite well. What it used to be, a lot of growth there. They don't really care. Nineteen fifty-three, <clears throat> upland drive. Lam Road drove up river through the new roads that led out of Koshu and into the eastward coast, where the old village near Shenzhen lay. It had been out this way for a decade, and the road looked busier, bustling with pickup trucks. John Thurman, hello! Uh, engines hauling containers. Then I remember those patchwork dirty roads where now the highway rolled out on and on. A vein of commerce flowing in inwards and outwards from Guangdong's tri cameral heart. The temperate weather seemed to soften the verdure of the tall glass grasses leading off into the deep woods and marshes where his father once told him that outlaws and heroes once hid. He put more pressure on the gas. Shenzhen was still not that far away. When he arrived, everyone gawked at him in his blue uniform. His mother, wrinkles emerging from her face now, smiled with a genteel slight pride. He embraced his mother, his cousins, of course, <clears throat> and his uncle. They invited him back to his house, where they sat around in a circle around a plate of mantu and condensed milk. <coughs> Tea was served, his little cousin's feet thumping hurriedly on the wooden floors to get to the cups to their elders. Homecoming. I made a name for myself, huh? Lom said to Uncle, a bit after the ceremony. Didn't think I'd ever get that here. Well, Uncle said, sloshing his tea around in his cup. No one expected you to work in this kind of thing. And a cerebic note entered his voice. Strange, your father was a revolutionary. You instead are a policeman. I don't just fire yourself to me, Uncle said to see. A man needs to do what he has to do for a living. We don't have much here, not anymore. Republican trade has been on the decline for years now, and my children have to take, have to, take to the sea to earn a living. He coughed. It's rough out here. I can always spend, send more matrix if uh, that's what you need. Ah, see, and Uncle met his eyes. There's more to it than money. Outside, the night sky is bristled with fireworks. Much more. How much more? Lem wondered. How much more? New engagement rules? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good to do. More police control in every city. Pretty much every own state. Japan will like it more. China will like it more. Um, how much? Uh, we're not at the max. We have eight percent more to go through, but we still need to investigate like co member finances too, which would be great. But that's gonna take some time. But we have almost eighty percent stability over two percent power every day. Hey, advancements in power efficiency technology. Sign us up, please. I think my light bulbs are brighter now. Oh, you betcha. Mm, I'd rather get this one done first so we can come back again faster. Beautiful, my friends. And it's so close to 1970, we might as well just go and grab some of this stuff. And there you go. 43%. We'll decrease it by 7.5. That'd be bad. flip -intastic. And I knew we would have to build more stuff, too, anyways. New rules of engagement. We, we just build, man. 
We are builders. An army base next, maybe? Uh, where do we want the army base? Choshu? There you go. And maybe a school in... Momae. Beautiful. Guang, Guangdong Wa 101. It was a pleasant day in Guangdong, but Lam Hao Su wasn't out enjoying it on the streets. They had a different job, helping out with the Cantonese train for Japanese beat cops and street officers on the force. Due to the chief executive's recent orders, as implemented by the uh, Commissioner Amori, Japanese expatriate officers were now ordered to learn basic Cantonese to do their jobs. The man on the top of the police, it was rumored, had not shirked that duty himself. In fact, he had gone above and beyond. Now, apparently being fluent enough in Cantonese to hold technical conversations in the language, write documents in a manner indistinguishable from local Chinese and read and unwrite and understand books without recourse to a dictionary. More than a few of the Lamb's new students were visibly displeased with having to rely upon Cantonese people to learn a so-called lesser language, but they complied with Lamb and other officers' instructions. None of them had a choice, after all. It was either learn Cantonese or get kicked out of the force, no matter one's rank. It reminded him, or reminded Lamb, of his first few days on the job, how bitter he and the others had been about being forced to learn the language of the foreign invaders. Lamb resisted the urge to let his schadenfreude at the Japanese officer's plight overwhelm him. It was unprofessional, besides. Being a civilization person about it might gain him something for little to no cost. Before resolving to go back to work, Lamb had an intrusive thought. But then, perhaps putting some more effort into it might help yet more, he continued. Sure, why not? We can't do much harm. Progress reform. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to increase the police presence here even more. Recall 1952. Even as the days went on and went, now that I've seen a change in uh, Hong Kong, the heat, heat of the midday sun, the stench of the dis discarded refuse, uh, the little indignities, ex eating extra costs here, being skimmed on the margin here, even Lee Kishin's lunch, a modest box of limp vegetables, hard meat, and rice, seemed to grow smaller without fail. Lee fought out the urge to wipe the sweat from his balding head. He survived on his own for years, even during the worst of the Japanese occupation. But now, factory after factory was going out of business, with the greedy ones being bought out and the stubborn ones being squeezed out. Lee sighed, wrestling with a nettlesome frustration. It was not quite hatred, not anymore, after being beaten into submission, but it all burnt the same, consumed the oxygen left as the future disappeared. For eventually, it would burn out, and Lee would have, to not, would have nothing. Who would pay for anything decent for a plastic flower factory? Lee kicked his right foot forward, and it was surprised when it made contact, a soft mumble, not even an apology, announced the presence of the man by Lee's feet, half lying, lying half-conscious against his factory's door. A wave of irritation created inside Lee. Wait, why don't you, a poke guy, go find somewhere else to you. A tinny sound interrupted an unmistakably unnatural despite his faintness. It was an unfamiliar tune in Japanese, emanating from a bundle of metal and wire clasped tightly into one's man hand. Even as the man himself seemed ready to let go of life, it was a radio, smaller than anything Lee had seen before. Intrigued, Lee put the Japanese man and his radio inside. Nice. So here, uh, we're looking pretty, pretty solid overall. Pretty solid. Uh, the Yakuza still want to get up a higher, which is kind of sucks. But uh, we have more influence now than them. This is very tight as well over here, which is not good, especially the Yakuza. Uh, Pierre is not very good for now. Just don't flip it around to us, please. And we'll do the pretty corruption stuff too as well. New rules of engagement. Police boxes. Um. On the small right things. Uh, look at this one. Men often compare their achievements of mountain peaks, tall, glamorous, and distant, never less conquered. The chief executive sees in the police force of the bottomless pit, dug over the course of decades. Until the more high profile, profile crimes are convicted, all they have to do is make a mountain of fluff pieces, stolen goods return to their owners. So, uh, school children united with their parents, lost best rescue to the local pound. Pablo snuck uh, as far back as page 14 of uh, the South China Morning Post. As the saying goes, it takes 10 years to establish a reputation, 10 seconds to ruin it. That's true. In 10 years, Guangdong's law enforcement will have either built a mountain of uh, out of pebbles or remain stuck in its own pit. There's no harm in trying either way, though. Nice. Increase the police presence even more? Oh, heck yeah. Increase Japanese expat support by a little bit, but that's fine. Nice. Do small things right. Happy November, everybody. You know what? Get that research speed. Who cares? Cut down on corruption some more. We're at 36%. Duty, desk duty. Tanaka Morihiro, a regular officer of the Guangdong police, had been forced to man a phone line and it made him bitter beyond belief. It raised a complaint about a superior uh, officer, a hard booty named Izumi Ichiro, and paid the price for it. The man had used excessive force in an arrest that went against police policy and when Tanaka reported it, Izumi immediately retaliated and no one, neither the Japanese nor his fellow Izujin, spoke up for him. As a result, he had been put on desk duty. He had been interviewed by a new internal affairs department, but he suspected nothing was likely to come of him. So much for a career in the Guangdong police, Tanaka thought. So much for being a uh, part of, uh, being a part of. And at the point, the phone rang. Picked up the phone, not being a hotline caller, but instead of his interview from the internal affairs department. It's me, Takayama 
Isaku, from the internal affairs, can you come over here, Tanaka? I've got something to discuss with you. Tanaka went out to the internal affairs department and sat down in Takayama's office. Looking to his left, through a glass window with a commanding view of the main area of the office, he saw a familiar face sitting behind uh, uh, saw a familiar face behind a desk, manning a phone line. He rolled around his taste face. Takayama, who was smirking, is that, is that the internal affairs officer nodded? Yes. He could play with sustain. Now, we can't spare anyone due to manpower shortages, or I'd say that dude is zooming kicked out before he could say, uh, Chuki Show. Regardless, let this be a sign that we're here to see that the new rules are being respected, or at least not as flagrantly violated as beforehand. It's not perfect, but it's a bare minimum. Tanaka felt confused. Maybe there's something to do with this new department up there, or maybe not after all. Tanaka had gotten used to his job as it was, no matter how much he hated it. Oi, Takayama, is there a way you could, I could sign up for, to join you? That's good to see, Takayama. Can I go back to work now? Police boxes. A man is shot on uh, Tin Chu Street in broad a daylight. The crowd scatters and screams as a victim dies atop a pool of his own blood. Police arrive an hour later, spend half that hunting for the suspect, and then head back to the precinct for drinks, cold beer for a cold case. Days later, the superintendent lambasts reporters in the press conference, suggesting that the men in uniform are anything but diligent. Guang Dong's jaded sister and have personally seen this song and dance at least once in their lives. Small wonder why they expect the worst from their tax money work. We can bring comments to them by bringing their beat cops from air conditioning offices to small outposts closer to crime scenes with, within their bailiwick. Bailiwick. Oh, that's a word I've never seen before. Pillow. How old am I again? Not enough. Not enough, man. Just not enough. Triads and Yakuza have got to go down, man. 72% support. My god. Oh. Oh, yeah, they just changed the flag immediately, too. Look at that. That's funny. Remove corrupt officials. Oh, yes. That's next. We're doing so well. I love it. This is such a... I'm feeling so positive in this one right now. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Man. Oh, do they change colors? They change colors. Look, because they modernize. Gao Zong Wu. Which I have played China before. I can't wait to try them again sometime. I love what the devs have done with TNO. I mean, just... General, generally, not everything, but almost everything. Almost like a Hitler stash there. But, uh... I just can't wait to see how this mod continues to grow and evolve. It's just so fantastic. Usually. Almost always. Now, Lee Chong was seeing the police far more often these days, and to his pleasant surprise, they weren't conducting as many arrests or taking as many bribes as they used to. In fact, it was a lot more community-oriented than it had been back in the day. More and more Zhu Chinese-speaking policemen are being deployed to the neighborhoods, and as a result, police and civilian interactions were far more pedestrian. Can you find my lost purse? Which way is the department store? That little urchin stuck his tongue out at me. Chun watched. As an officer directed a worker who was doing the potty dance in his desperation to the nearest washroom, it reminded him of the kind of officer who had shown them their way when they arrived in Guangdong, leaving the ruins of their old village behind without him. Chun was sure they'd be trapped in a dormitory now, and Chun resolved to find that man and thank him if he could. Now it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, the police had a lot to answer for, Chun thought, as he watched a man being bundled into a police wagon, but they weren't as cows as they once had been. Here's a go. If it was a choice between the police and the camp by tie, Chun would have flipped a coin and picked whichever, whichever evil came up. Now the police disciplined themselves and becoming more and more a part of the community with each passing day, the choice was obvious to him. Or was it? He needed to watch and see more closely, hear what others had to say, and so on. What? When he did that, he concluded that the other shared his initial halting approval. Nine fifty-five. Early morning at the precinct, in the break room, he sat with his fellow officers around a new Matsushita TV. So that the government had, uh, uh, had allowed him to procure the past years of work. Tonight, sipping somewhat stale coffee, they watched a receding a recording of the Sonus Lee versus Fujitsu trial. The David versus Goliath of the electronics industry was somewhat say unfolding in full color. He finished his coffee and went into the locker room to pack up. His ship was over. Officer Hayashi no longer existed. Or did he? Oh, uh, <clears throat> uh, over. He walked outside. Overcast clouds came in from the sea. My bad, that was my, my hand. Uh, engulfing the sky in blobs of slate gray. He saw those pennants, those banners, and those broadcades of an advertisement snap and flood on the wind like a pl splayed palm displaying its contents. Where did the lab man and Hayashi begin? Right by the train station, near a newspaper kiosk, the radio sang a dual, dual ballad. Once a Cantonese, chased by Japanese, he did not catch the lyrics in a hurry as he was to get home. Who was he? He waited for the train to come. Haka, he thought of first. Guess people. That made sense to him for a moment, and then it passed and shook his head no. When was the last time he'd even spoke the dialect? I can't remember. Is he Chinese? That too, it made sense for a moment. Or Japanese, neither. There cannot be two sons in this one sky, unless you're on the uh, Star Wars, uh, you know, planet of Tatooine. That left him with a singular noun, Zhujim. The stranger's in a familiar land. The train screeched to a halt before him, and his door sliding open smoothly to let the flood of passengers in. It strode forward and held on to the handful, or handhold. 
Lamp thought of his father. No letters since that fateful day. No more briefcases. No more news. Is he still fighting the good fight? He, no, no answers. He watched the city shook and the skyline shifted. The tips of the skyscrapers, contrasting against the gray sky, never seemed less beautiful. This is where he belonged. Where Hayashi was, where Lamb would be. Two, uh, two natures, a single being. I want to do that about corruption, man. Corruption. And then, with, after this one, we're going to go with <clears throat> demand jurisdiction from Kenpai Tai. <coughs> we'll see if we can do this. Hopefully we can. Uh, after seeing the old Kilona police force found wanting, uh, and found wanting, the Camp Ita is short of the final authority of Guangdong's law since its founding. For the time being, they were assured until its reorganized officers are de deemed fit to exercise their responsibilities on their own. These 20 years have proved that nothing is more permanent than temporary measures, and with the GPF's a disappointing state, not everyone begrudged over our overstayed guests either. Such opinions have been changing since Alenko introduced its motley reforms. When before the Camp Ita were grudgingly seen doing what the police clearly could not, they are uh, now becoming cold, aloof, out of touch, foreigners intruding and fairly into their own detective's work. Perhaps now the time to exchange pleasantries with Kuno Miyazaki. Even a rock like him will budge with enough push. Help him get it done. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. I'm happy. 1970 with an economic check coming up. Do we get uh, 48 billion? We have 49 billion. We have more production units. My God, awesome. Basically 48 billion. Well, we're already 49. God, we are crown jewel in the Empire, uh, Empire of Japan right now. Uh, where do they want the ar another army base? Oh no, we, we, uh, beautiful, my god. No, not the product cycle ending, no. Still looking very good though. Primary schooling? Well, we might be able to get that fixed eventually. <coughs> very sound fiscal health. Police boxes. A Chinese family saw a new police box uh, being put up in their neighborhood. The family members looked at each other with suspicion. The police had only ever responded in with excessive force back in the day, so the family sat among themselves to give the box a wide berth and await further developments. As time passed by, they found themselves pleasantly surprised by the inhabitants of the police box. I was that most usually one or two policemen, as one who spoke Cantonese fluently at all times. Far from patrolling in force or setting shifts to watch the neighborhood, they wore minimal armor and walked and talked with people that they were serving. They responded to small incidents and called them back up when things became too difficult, uh, keeping interested onlookers at a safe distance rather than interesting people in mass as they once did. The family was so wary, though. Surely, Guangdong, the police were not friends of the people. But even now and then, a child ran up to the officers in and out of the police boxes and said something. The officer, far more chewing, far from chewing up the kid out, would have a pleasant conversation with him or her, and everyone noticed this. Like it or not, the police in the new presence was here to stay in Guangdong. Well, the police authorities wondered whether it was enough, or whether it might be beneficial to pay for more of them. For more of them, they concluded that more of these police boxes strategically placed would be beneficial. Now that present outcome was good enough. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. China likes us more than uh, Japan. Huh? How many British for the product cycle? 131. We already went through half of the end of the product cycle? Jesus. Uh, demand jurisdiction. Public order ordinance. You yeah, actually might be able to get that. We have illuminated the path forward for public safety in Guangdong with new practices and procedures instituted in the Guangdong Police Force and a new modus vivendi for the Camp Pai Tai. But in case anyone wasn't fully aware and compliant with the new face of the law enforcement in Guangdong, we must formally legislate a legislative program into the law. We must know whether the assembled corporations of Guangdong will stand with the future in the rule of law or stand defiantly on the side of the bending laws. John Kong supports us. Sony supports us. Matsushita even supports us. Hitachi's like, nah. And even Fujitsu. Fujitsu even kind of likes us too, so that's not bad. But as normal, we should probably begin to start to... Uh, uh, focus on saving a little bit of political power for the future. 70 comprise. Oh, the Chinese comprises two thirds of the entire population. Captain 90%, Captain 95%. They have not been going up as high as we have been, or have been in the past because we're not really focusing on them too much, honestly. Can I do some more? Can we lower the triad's influence? Government support, no. Decreases triad by one and a half. But that's, that then just goes to the Yakuza, and that's no, not good. I'd rather the current benefits of. The triads and anything else. And this also decreases the expat support too, so that's not really worth it. Oh, we can also lower petty corruption even more. Ooh, look at that.
the tennis time has come. Down with gum or do or die, those evident to the three men sitting in the office of the chief executive in Koshu. Marita Akeo, Lee Kushing, and Omori Khan reflect on the work that had brought him this, to the stage, of having reached a point where they could at last be forcing the Camp Patai lunatics back to their barracks and out of Guangdong's law enforcement scheme. It's time, isn't it, Akeo Khan? We need to call Colonel Miyazaki and in and get him to leave Guangdong alone and let Khan's men take the lead instead, Lee said. Omori nodded and scowled. Make no mistake, gentlemen. That would be a thrice darn gamble. Miyazaki, the egotistical lunatic, thinks poorly of my boys at the best of times. In fact, he frequently says we're just a horde of mongrelized incompetence. Never mind that the mongrels are the ones building the radios and computers his lot like overusing. Morita's brow furrowed. There's a chance, isn't there, that he'll refuse all right. Spew some bowler played about the police being too undermanned and unequipped to take their place. To talk about taking your words under advisement, right? I found that instead of meeting minutes the last time, the chief executive tried to die the, drive the Kenpai die out. Uh, the other two nodded. Mori decided. Best we not let it come to that then. Get ready, gentlemen. He reached for the phone as Lee and Omori nodded again. Yes, good afternoon. It's time. Bring Colonel Miyazaki in, please. So we do this. We get watchdog groups. Our military professionals begin to increase. Get better corruption levels. Our military professionals will begin to increase. Matsushita informants. I want to help. I really do. Matsushita <clears throat> performed. Uh, sympathy came across even more hollowly over the phone. <coughs> Uh, but you mustn't understand, Marita. I have people under me who are uncomfortable with over this oversight with this comprehensive. Marita rubbed his temples. Uncomfortable because they're criminals, he thought. But he remained silent and let Matsushita continue on the other end of the line. If I could just reassure them that I had people on the inside who could give warning if any investigations were heading our way, I think I could get them on board. Marita's jaw clinched. Matsushita was asking for his explicit permission to place spies in his new police department to sanction corruption for his very birth. On the other hand, there wasn't corruption inevitable in such an institution. It wouldn't be better if we could just use it to his own ends? No. The economic review. Get back to work. So we increase cease by three more, huh? Next year, our shareholders expect a real growth of 12% or GDP of 50, 55 ba -ba billion. Well, with everything going on, I don't know if we can actually hit 50, 55 billion, but... We have 53 votes. We're good. Uh, and, and out of the shell companies. In recent years, and in line with the... Yoko Hideke's own background as a quasi-legitimate industrialist and financier, the Yaks have begun to diversify their operations, engaging in money laundering and white-collar fraud through network of shell companies and financing bodies that operate within Guangdong's free willing economy. While we remain dedicated to the principles of competi competitive capitalism, where it's not so accommodative of criminality masquerading as capitalism, and we'll tie the noose around those conducts or conduits of misconduct, playing favorites. <coughs> Murita's desk was covered with letters, letters from politicians within his own faction, all asking for a piece of the new Guangdong police force. One wanted a cushy second job overseeing some local precinct. One wanted to make sure that the police wouldn't infringe on his personal liberty, by which he meant to shut down his favorite brothel. One wanted to make sure that the Financial Crimes Division did not look at his tax reports with too fine a comb. Murita sighed and looked at them. The new police report force was supposed to be honest, an impartial tool to protect the citizens, but if it wanted to exist at all, it looked like he had to compromise it for the sake of his own allies. Adds Sony and CK favoritism. Nepotism and favoritism will be granted. Norm. The melancholy of Colonel Miyazaki. Do we even need to decrease this any further? We try or continue doing this too. Well, the matter was put to him right away by the three man team of Omori, Lee, and Morita. The camp fighter Colonel Miyazaki had no choice but to admit defeat. The Guangdong police, guided by the th threefold efforts of the chief executive and his lieutenants, had turned the camp fighter detachment in Guangdong into a complete anachronism. The expansion of police capabilities had neatly made the Kenpai both unnecessary and effective in the eyes of the government and the public. Considering this, Miyazaki was visibly beginning to wilt. At that, Morita, feeling an immeasurable sympathy for him, tried to offer him some reassurances about his role in the country. <coughs> Without a question, Colonel, the Kenpai will not be expelled from Guangdong. The very suggestion, of course, is outrageous. No, what we need from you is to remain on call when we need you and return to your regular duties, policing the Imperial Japanese Army Detachment and watching over the Japanese population. Miyazaki nodded and suppressed the urge to say, cold comfort, or something crasser among the, along those lines. Instead, he forced a smile and bowed from his SC position. Thank you, sirs. If you need us, we are ready. Decrease the Kenpai Tai control. Increase the Zhujin and China's government support. The Guangdong Japanese SOFA will be updated in the sort of laws. We're near the, getting near the cap, aren't we? Yes, we are, sirs. Yes, we are. Comprise of the core of the population. He focused demands. Um... Morita picked up the third, as picked up on his third ring, and his eyes went wide when he heard the voice of Ibuka Masaru. Morita Ibuka began. I want to reach out to you because despite our differences, we both want to improve the state of police in Guangdong. I think I can help you do that. Morita's curiosity overwhelmed his suspicion. How exactly? I want to make sure that your police reform program put emphasis on statistical, rational methods of crime reduction, which take into account human nature. Morita gritted his teeth. You knew exactly what Ibuka meant by that. He had long ago been privy to a conversation in which Ibuka rallied against the childish humanism the crime was caused by material need and not moral failings, as well as a soft-hearted utopianism of trying to rehabilitate. 
criminals and reintegrate them into society. Every proposal meets these requirements, he continued. I'll give it my political support. I'm sorry, but I don't think we can do that. Police will embrace statistical and rational methods for managing crime. Nah, we good. Beautiful. Opinion. Well, they have such high opinion. Maybe we can do the one with China again. We got so much political power. We can, like I said, we do need to save it for police corruption. Let's try. Uh, let's save. <coughs> uh, even though it takes forever to save, whatever. I wonder if it'd be too much. If we could ask really high non, that'd be really cool. Because I, they wouldn't get it. As, we wouldn't get it probably though. We're doing so well with China. Like, come on. Maybe not this time. Um, on Morita's desk, next to his phone, was a piece of paper with a personal number of Komi Kenichiro. Morita was looking at it, wondering, what, as he had for some days now, whether to down an attempt to gain Hitachi's support for his proposed police reform. Well, was considered the, considering the idea, the secretary placed the latest edition of the Tokyo Chunichi Shimbun on his desk, which he frequently read, both for the familiar of Na, its Nagoya-based editorials, and the refreshing nature of this liberal slant, as far as the home ministry allowed. Picking it up, Morita. So the remain story deal with the state of policing in Manchukuo, as it read. Morita's stomach turned, and reports of brutal treatment in the custody of men and women dragged from their homes in the night in front of their screaming children, of indefinite detachment without trial or charge, of people simply vanishing off the street never to be seen again, of mutilated, unde undefined, unde unidentifiable bodies laying in ditches and floating down rivers. Morita thought of coma eyes of an employer Nissan and their connections to Manchukuo. Looking on the paper again, he realized that this would happen This would if he let Hitachi build the police force. That wouldn't happen, he thought. Not in Guangdong, not on my watch. He threw the paper away, as he should. The Consul General's Games. Oh. <coughs> the Consul... Uh, 30 minutes. Uh, a ha full half hour. That was how long uh, Morita Akeo had been sitting in the waiting room of the Chinese Consul General 4. I was practically seeming at the sheer disgracefulness of it. You know that Sony was in there. Was he just sitting in there and letting him in stew? The businessman hardly ever had a half an hour to spare, and a nation's leader certainly doesn't. Indeed, as watch was giving him increasingly dire warnings spelled out in ticking black numbers, each movement a reminder of the men he was eschewing so that he could sit in a lobby, which was becoming uncomfortably stifling. The door swung open, and the crisply dressed consul general emerged. My apologies, chief executive. I was kept late by a series of complaints. I'm sure you understand. I'll be keep light for my own meeting at this rate, consul. I appreciate punctuality. Uh... I'm sure of it, a song replied. Morita Akeo could practically feel the insincerity ooze from his words and drip onto his forehead. Maybe that was just sweat. Do they have a heater in here? Regardless, song continued. I'd like to speak to you about these complaints. I'd make a point of putting some time aside for reading the gripes of the Chinese here each week, and I found some today which were particularly concerning. Please come in. Murdi Akeo stood, checking his watch. You kept me waiting too long, Consul. My eyes in the Legislative Council expect me to see them any minute. We'll have to find another time. <clears throat> The Consul General sighed, adjusting his tie in a motion of disappointment, so honest that the executive was sure he had practiced it. Surely they can understand one missed meeting. These are pressing matters, Chief Executive, and I would appreciate you treating them as such. Let's chat and ooh, we lose a seat. That's pretty tough. Losing a seat's pretty rough. But we have forty. We actually have fifty four. So honestly, you know what? Ninety four percent, ninety nine percent? Let's chat. Passage of the public ordinance ordinance. Uh, on a clear day uh, in Koshi, the Legislative Council and the state of Guangdong remained peaceful even though the bill was being put to the vote. It helped, of course, that the bill was entirely uncontroversial aside from the views of Kim Ai Kenichiro, who went off on a jeremiad uh, against it uh, just before the vote. The gentlemen, you need to understand that this proposal is a misguided best force and can't pluck out of our affairs is a blunder. If you don't have them, who will prevent the Japanese here from striking out on their own or rebelling against the government? Who will prevent the Chinese and Zhijian communities from developing strange ideas about rebellion against the stat sal salutary concept of Pan-Asianism? We need the Kampai Tai and the Kono Miyazaki, or else the whole state of Guangdong will become unprofitable. The Kamai is dismayed. Not many people seem to buy into his argument, and even some of his own delegates were looking askance at him. It seemed the vast majority of Guangdong's business community shared Morita's view that the Kampai Tai ought to stop sticking in their rim horn glasses and annoying noses into the company business. Given that and the mood of the room, it made sense that the ordinance passed without issue. As Lee nodded approvingly, Matsushita joined him in approval, and Ibuka talked to his delegates about how Morita made a good decision for once in his worthless life. Morita watched Komai leave, displeasure and anger marring his features. Morita wondered why Komai would get so heated over weakening the Kampai Tai. His only hunch was that the great man, or the man, had interest with the Kampai Tai, and possibly even the military that went deeper than he admitted, or anyone he suspected. Dismissing the thought for now, Morita went to speak to the legislators. Ah, watchdog groups, awesome. Everyone say has more police control. 0.05% a month. My god. But it could be better. Where are we at now? 
89%. My god. That's so good. It's so good. Because I know we're going to need them later. 822, not bad. Fair enough. That settles it then. The Consul General concluded with a flourish, closing his folder emphatically. It was out of his seat within a second. His suit jacket straightened in his body that a second after that. Murita Akeo was in no such rush, and he intended to watch with surprise interest as his counterpart buzzed himself so suddenly. Where's the, where's the fire, Consul General? Murita Akeo asked, or laughed. Uh, Song paused a moment as if catching himself, then returning to tidying up his deliberate care. My apologies, Chief Executive. I have an outing with friends in the Chinese district. Old friends of mine. I suppose I'm excited to see them. Another laugh from the seated Chief Executive. Well, I would hate to be working in my free time. What do you mean, Song? Turned back to face him, smoothly butting uh, his suit. Every time I see you in the papers, it's meeting school children, or shaking hands with factory workers, or speaking to nurses. Always in the Chinese district, always for work. Song chuckled. Nah, no, 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 not always. I may be a diplomat, but I grew up here. It's a professional and a personal duty to see how my hometown is doing. At a moment's pause, then a grin. Don't worry, I'll be sure to let you know if any complaints are here. Good day to you, Chief Executive. With that, he left out of his office, and leaving Ita a chaos smile to slide off his face alone. At least he has a sense of humor. There's a valuable clue about Song Zigong's character. We may be able to find more of her. Ooh. Which kind of makes me want to do this one, too. Get the Japanese representative. Maybe that'd be good? Maybe? Not enough growth. Two and a quarter. Political power is not enough. Quite a bit of inflation, but that's okay for now. Security detail. So be it. Nagano's a finger traced a, 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 a cross, a red line on the map, snaking through printed city streets and past blue circles. It came to stop at an intersection, tapping it twice. Choke point for ambush. Your men are out of position. Onwards. To a bridge. Choke point. No security detail. They're running according to a park. People con congregate here, and yet there are no, so few policemen stationed. Tell me, Chief Executive, did you draw this? Morito Akeo fixed the general with a glare he knew the man didn't fear. No, the police force submitted it for consideration. Of course, amateurs have always been in, have such passion for the work, but as a delegation of Japanese executives and Japanese lawmakers, and so it is my responsibility to actually keep them secure, so here's what you'll do. <clears throat> uh, general, I'm sure. Uh, the IJ garrison will supplement your police forces in key areas. Similarly, the Camp Vital will ensure that no trouble forms around the tour's entourage or the route. We'll secure the checkpoints which your men have been ignored and create a safe passageway through the city. Another, another scout escaped Morita Akeo's expression. He was being shown up again by Nagano, uh, the arrogant dude, letting himself be made a fool of for what felt like a hundred thousand unacceptable, but it would certainly take a lot of elbow grease to get the police security plan that was up to standard. And at the end of the day, he did suspect that Nagano cared more about a good security plan than political showmanship. That Jay's support would be appreciated, certainly. Fine. Look at the challengers. Bad word. We have 53 seats. God, are you freaking kidding me? No way, 48. Bruh. Bruh. And now we're up to 23. Are you kidding me, bro? <sighs> Out of the shell companies, of course. But after that, then what? Tolerate some vices? Wave the trucks through. Stanley Ho's primary business is trading, including an illicit goods sourced from Japan and moved over to the border into China, or purchased in China and imported back into Guangdong at a market of prices. Beyond moving goods, or practice serves as an easy way for Stanley and Associates to launder the proceeds from other activities via generous invoices between the associate businesses. To the extent that the goods are being smuggled will not actually be turned against the chief executive, the government, or the people, we have reached an understanding with the triads. Apart from some truly dangerous controlled substances, of course, weapons, opium, or other narcotics, we'll give Stanley Hill's trucks more lenient checks so that he may build his war chest for corner in the underworld. Scenes from the underworld 1. Are you friggin' kidding me again? Bruh. More crap like that. Oh, I hate that. I'm not gonna do the petty crafting one yet. I wanna wait. Because it's just. It's not, not enough. 97%, my god. Breaking the shell. Oh, Wong Ho Fai, a Sujian bureaucrat known as Ishida Shintaro to his colleagues, also would be a qualified auditor. So it made sense that one of the Amori's lieutenants would come to him in the secret one evening and ask for help. What is it you want me to do then? Go into Yokai's Haideke's various legitimate business activities. We suspect they're front for money laundering, and in that, Wong smirked. He'd always hated the Yakuza. Oh, screw over the Yakuza it is, then. I'm in. He took some critical calls, a few threats deployed here and there, but the in income records were eventually audited, and their situation became clear. Those, the list of those Yakuza and Yokoi-owned businesses that were to be raided slowly took shape. Before Wong submitted the report, however, he made sure to do one last thing. He arranged for his family to be kept safe by any means possible. Um, making sure that the Yakuza would never get their hands on them. As he made the call and watched approvingly from a distance as the raiders began, he got a hold of all his relatives. He saw to it with Commissioner Amori's help that they were safe and sound. Then, accepting that he had done his duty, remained calm and went back to work. Got home some of them as it were extra insurance to be doubly sure of his family's safety. 
Really starting to piss off Japan a little bit more. Tell her some vices. Oh, no, page 2 of the Zhujian Census Forum. You are tasked with answering three essay questions related to your current status in Quan Canton. The government places a strong preference for answering for answers written in correct and functional Japanese. Describe question one. Describe, describe your background. Include familial and ethnic details where possible. Answer one. <coughs> My name is Hayashi Kozin. I come from Chosu a few miles east towards the Three Mountains. I'm a Hakka speaker. My family had been a self farmers for a century or two. The recent turbulence has now necessitated a migration to Shinsen, where my extended family now lives. Question two. Do you consider yourself to have contributed meritoriously to the state? If so, describe the ways you have. A two. Answer two. Yes, I've served in the Koshu PD for four years or so, starting in 1951. Prior to that, I served in the Kowloon precinct for a year, before my transfer in 1952. I received multiple accommodations for my role in the tried gun smuggling case in which I was also wounded, including one for the inspector. I believe that, having put my life on the line for the state, I'm qualified to answer in the affirmative. Question three. What are your opinions on the co-prosperity sphere, headed by the Emperor of Japan, and your opinion has it contributed positively towards the development of Canton? A. Answer three. The uh, Pro Prosperity Sphere has heralded a new era in Asian politics. In Canton, Japanese capital, an investment of substantially increases standard of living among the populace. I believe personally that without Japanese intervention to establish a state here, the three pros would not have been transformed in this way it did for the past six years. Again, as such, I see this sphere as a net positive. Truth bleeds into fiction, real bleeds into unreal. No matter how much we try, crime and violence will never truly be eradicated. The question is simply controlling it and who making sure that the consequences do not affect society at large. The business and leisure facility by Stanley Ho's contracts are not unique or contacts. He does promise a means to make sure that they don't spiral out of control or begin to work against our interests. Opium dens and Yakuza affiliated loan sharks will be outed so long as we turn a blind eye to the slow plans. Topless bars and other establishments in the Three Pearls, better the devil we know, after all. Advancement in audio visual technology. Right. Okay, we can decrease description more. Does anyone know where the play button is on this thing? Nice. That's so close for the products, though. Uh, decreasing triad influence, hopefully, because that, that actually went up more. Admin offices. We were political power. Um, how about prisons? We like prisons, right? Why not? And Joshu? And admin office in Mama. And then a school in Shoshu again. Well, even though it's already maxed out, so we'll put it there. How are we doing? Are you still fighting down there with literally like nothing? Now that you have enough strength for now, can you actually just do that and just go? You might be able to. We'll see. An easy trip, huh? <coughs> Tell her some vices. And confront your boy, UDK. Uh, I tried smuggling, moving hard cash from back yet another successful journey. Spent selling Ga Guangdong a bootleg American merchant dads within China tents as he approached a checkpoint. Next to the sign incorrectly marked checkpoint, checkpoint in English, there was a guard waiting after processing the people in front of him. The smuggler was worried. He knew that since the Yasuda collapse ended, the policemen had been cracking down hard. A sign of that was the fact that he spent an hour waiting at the border where it had once been much quicker. Being concerned at the prospect of being singled out for an enforcement action, he grabbed a large wad of his own money to bribe the guards. However, his contacts had told him to use a passphrase. When the guard came up to the window, he uttered the passphrase, and the guard smirked in recognition. The guard looked over the contents without paying much attention and came back to the window and said, Well, sir, got no weapons or narcotics in there, so you can go through. With a wink and a nudge, he added, No need to declare anything for import, and let the man through. Weekend Yo Yokoi Hidekate's Shiki Foundation. But then changed his mind and said, Wait, those are due to boil goods. We're inspecting them. Oh man, what the heck? Weekend says, uh, Yeah, we need to do this one. Crap. Confront him. For Stanley Ho to decisively seize control of the underworld, we still need to eliminate or otherwise isolate his nemesis in the Japanese underworld. Yokoi Hideki, the vulture campus and fixture for the Yakuza, we can only pray that we have strengthened Stanley's associates and weakened Yokoi's enough that our attempt to box Yokoi in, good, in for good will not be disrupted. Uh, it's time to call on Yokoi for a little conversation, of course. Ninety-eight percent. My God, product cycle. We support Sony. Do we get seventy percent interest? Oh my God, please. Yes, we did. Holy shnikes. Um, target markets. 
It's all America once. It still has a crap ton of uh, productivity. We saw Japan again. It's been a while since we've done that, so. Profitability is not as great as it could be, but. But America, so much profitability. Hmm. I kind of want to sell the Japanese again, though. Let's try it. Uh, interesting, we don't need as much now. So, we're really focus on this group here. And save for stuff up there, too. One must be a realist. Not bad. It could be better, though. Where are we at? 50 billion? Yeah, it's going to be pretty rough. I don't know if we can get up that high. We might have to go actually to uh, sell it to America, but we'll see. <coughs> Ankash Earthquake. Oh, boy. In Peru. That's not good. Eighty percent, my God. And you know what? We're gonna do. We're just gonna keep pressing this one for now because we can get ten political power pretty quickly overall. The finest money can buy. Low noise amplifications. So this one, we need 20% more for interests. We can do this twice, and then do the other one to get 100% interest. Confront him. Uh, can't see no license. Even as we have worked to influence the war between San Leon and Yokoi Hideke behind the scenes, the Legislative Council has been drawing up plans for establishing and auctioning off the rights to operate all legitimate gambling activities in Guangdong. It'll be one of the most lucrative business contracts tendered in Guangdong's history, and now a long-awaited day to bid for the casino contract has arrived. Going once, going twice, one must be a realist, though. Sergeant Suma Kazuya of the Guangdong Police, a Japanese officer originally from the Kanagawa Prefecture, was joined by his fellow Kanagawa denizen, Officer Yoshida Hakuya, on a rainy night put on one chai district in Hong Kong. As usual, they saw the usual sites of vice and criminality, uh, strip bars, dance clubs, business and love hotels, and all the rest, and began to shut them down in accordance with the usual orders from above. The test time, however, was difficult, different. Sergeant Soma, as all the other sergeants leading patrols, that night in the place once known as Xiangang and Hong Kong, had been given orders from above that contained lists of businesses not to be shut down. Lists were not large relative to the ones that were earmarked for the usual shutdowns and expropriation. But they were so large enough and close enough to the tribes, it was rumored to irritate Officer Isheda, who quietly muttered his displeasure about it to his superior during a whole on the work. Uh, Soma spread his hands. Believe me, Hakuya, it irritates me too. I do all know all the dangers of this kind of nonsense being allowed to fester. I know it's even worse when it has something to do with the thrice darn triads, but we have to be realistic about this. When he should have interrupted, Suma raises his hand. We just can't do anything about it. We can't li uh, live action role play as a character from that stupid Astro Boy show or some fantasy hero we're born in another world or something. We're not paid to ask questions, so less if it's true uh, what they say about the orders being given from the chief executive himself. Give another better dose of realism. You should have shrugged, but then asked. Obviously, we can't get too hard on them, or else it'd be our hides, but sure we can at least try to enforce some standards at that, as colleague thought briefly and said. No, no, stick to the orders. Stick to the orders. Okay, so with that in mind, they're 98%. 1% more would be too much, right? 99.6? 99.8. Okay, no. We can, let's just let's stick to orders. Sticking to the orders, boy. Casino license, of course. Oh, 10% would be good to do. Good, 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 good. Get to 25, 2 and a quarter. Not bad. Very good, pretty good, pretty good. Nice. And now we can do that one too. Which we probably will. <coughs> I love this campaign so much. It's so much fun. More quality, please. Good. Two months left. A tape recorder, huh? 95%, 45% target of Empire of Japan. Monthly data storage, huh? Oh, this one's next. Quality will increase. Quality will increase. This, please. My god, we just built so fast. We're so good. Schools, here. And then... Hospitals... I like more admin offices, personally. We built things up so well so far, so, like, pretty good. 
Oh, we're done with the lounge auction too. Go figure. Catching the snake. 30 minutes before the meeting, Commissioner Amori arrived in the Chief Executive of Morita's office in Koshu's government complex with a requested set of photos and him. You kept my men awfully busy chasing after the officer these past few months, so Morita deposited the papers on Morita's desk with an annoying tough. Uh, <clears throat> I just thought Mr. Ho's people have done as much as behind the scenes as we have in our official capacity. He has, Ikishin assured Amori. We wouldn't have called Yokoi in if we didn't have him dead to rights. I've seen airtight cases in Tokyo, Chief uh, Secretary Lee, Omori stated, his jaw tightening. This isn't one of them. This isn't a legal argument, it's a showdown. If your coy doesn't blink, I'm aware of the consequences of Commissioner Omori just stated, more confidently than he felt. And I'm prepared to accept them, whatever they may be. One way or another, Yokoi and his Yakuza associates will rein their activities in. Thirty minutes later, Yokoi made his entrance. Our prior actions will nudge this gamble towards our favor. A hotline for petty corruption. The uphill battle Chief Executive Marita faces in the anti-corruption drive stems in large part from the people's efforts themselves, or rather, in its absence. They're all they're all ignorant sheep. They've seen the faces in the government the house come and go. Yet they see nothing out of the promises let go bandies out either, so why bother putting any work themselves? It's a prophecy that fulfills itself seemingly from government to government. Enter his novel solution, 25-266-366. Dial on your phones and report the Dodge clerk from Central to Marita himself. Maybe it won't make a dent in the more clandestine networks that the Yakuza fall back on, but it'll assure your jaded office man that he had made a difference no matter how minor. Audit Senior Officers. A KHK journalist was writing a fluff piece on how Hong Kong transformed after being liberated from the imperialist British. For this, she interviewed an old man in Diamond Hill. After some samai and lemon tea, she asked, Dao Ren, what was life like in Hong Kong before the civil authority? Back then, things were not so civil, said the man as he chewed on a toothpick. We paid taxes to the government house and kept the streets clean. The uh, Guai Lao paid no taxes and left their horse crap on the sidewalk. Then, has anything changed when the Japan drove the British out of Hong Kong? Certainly. Now we pay the ribbon so they can sell us with their horse crap. As the saying goes, the more things change, the more things they say the same. Chief Executive Morita plans to prohibit such double standards within the government's upper echelons by bringing their financial records under close scrutiny, though undoubtedly by the ire of the friends in the home islands. 1957. Oh. Uh, transit. The train rose to the elevated platform and a lamb went through the passenger doors the moment they were open. He stood, grasping a handhold. After one or two minutes, those doors slid shut and the train shuddered. Lamb could feel the train wheels grinding as he picked up momentum. There they went, shuttling into Guangzhou. Years before, Lan would have driven all the way from his home in the outskirts of the precinct. Now, work was a train, train right away. As it clambered at full speed, Lan made all the time in the world think of the world and where he was. So much had changed. Soaring from the underground, the route gave Lan a view of the city skyline. It was a somewhat bright morning. The neon lights were now inert and dark as the sun broke through the gloom. The skyscraper, still an alien, domineering sight after all these years, tore through the sidelines and brutal, needle-like steeples draped in concrete. Lan just had to stop. It was hot in the carriage. Lan remembered Hong Kong. For sure, years of chasing empty dreams in a city whose decay came with a startling death knell there. Two, men had tired themselves of the earth built of towers that reached up into the heavens, creating paradises of concrete above the infernal that raged below. He steeled, steepled his fingers and saw them clearly for the first time in a long while. It was no innocent to keep order in this place to shove away the hungry masses. It took a different kind of person. Was he human after all? Or was he a molded creation of this monstrosity, fired in all the kilns of suffering until what emerged was a certain or ceramic impression of a man? He knew not what answers would be satisfied the bur fiery, burning questions that dogged his conscience. Closing his eyes, Officer Hayashi looked ahead and saw the train rolling into the gentle slope leading to darkness. Through all these years past, to all the years hence, a strategic withdrawal. All times are bad, as you say. Your poised face was impassive, but he was carefully scrutinizing every piece of evidence of Morita, Commissioner Omori, and Leah put before him. I don't see how any of this means anything to me. Stonewalled. That had been the entire course of the meeting with the Yokoi Hideki, who had already an ad ready alibi, or, an, or could profess innocence over every incident as the police and the Stanley's men investigated, but Morita had kept his hits coming, and Yokoi was visibly taking more time in his answers, getting him with Rory Street. Uh, cut your crap, Yokoi, Amori stabbed one of the reports with his pen. For your, your organization is being rolled up, retired. Even if you don't see the inside of a cell, you'll be left with nothing sooner or later. So confident, Yokoi shot back, but the police doesn't have the best record for finishing what they start. Who said it's only the police? Uli uttered. We're offering you a deal. It's better to live poor than die with nothing. Yokoi's eyes narrowed, his hackles rising. You watch your tone with me, you Chinese a-hole, or, or what, Marita Bark, cutting Yokoi off. It's as the commissioner said, the police and the tribes are muscling you out. Here's my advice, one businessman to another. A smart man cuts his losses. Only a superman fights a losing battle to the end when they have the other options. Yokoi felt silent, the clock ticking away steadily in the background. He finally let loose a melodramatic sigh. Fine, there's no shortage of places to turn to profit in this fear anyway. The Akaza will stay in their lane. Nice. So 46 days left. 5% more product quality, and uh, we'll do that one too. And this one, be good. Beautiful, my friends, absolutely beautiful. Oh, we can do that one too, but whatever. Product quality is still of great importance. Over here. Yeah, because 26, that's good. Here, that's actually looking more controllable, actually, here. But this is getting close. We're at a difference of 9 and a difference of 11, so we're getting closer.
Hey, a mass moon data storage? We love it. You, me, we absolutely just love it. Oh. Even more political power by 2%? Yes, please. Um, I guess we'll also go over and then, since we can't do anything else. Pretty corruption, 30%, not bad. Uh, four scientists on over time, probably not. 15 days left. So we're currently at what? Almost 90%. My goodness. My, my, my goodness. Hope we get something else here. Hotline for the petty corruption. The hotline in action. Uh, Tam Yun Fong was at his wit's end. Uh, some dude out of a cop had just swindled him out of a good portion of his month's pay and he didn't know what to do about it. Sure, there was a new anti-corruption hotline or whatever that Morita and that bootlicker for the new commissioner had set up, but that made a target out of Joss paper best, Tam Thumb. Everyone and their mother-in-law quite, knew quite well that the Guangdong police were completely useless in everything they did, especially when it came to investigating their own. That Tam himself knew of cases where supposed watchdogs and instead swept their colleagues' corruption under the rug looking after their own before the people they were originally sworn to protect. But Lam had no other recourse. Nobody else was going to help him. Maybe it might help him if he phoned in and got off his chest. And got off his chest. As Sam went about doing that, the phones in Guangdong's police newly established anti-corruption offices were being clogged like nobody's business, and a list of problem officers and incidents of corruption grew larger, ever larger. Morita Keo and Omori Khan reviewed the list and hung their heads in the sides of the problem. Ah, well, Omori said, at least you know who had hit. Do we get another day to do this stuff? Come on. Pop up. Pop up, please. Pop up. There we go. That's what we like to see. The last readout. Lee was pacing left and right in the chief executive uh, office, wearing a tray on the carpet in front of Morita's desk in anticipation. Morita didn't blame him, despite having a million other things to tend to. The two of them had been cloistered in the room for nearly two hours. The auction started, Lee muttered, eight, four minutes ago. How is this taking so long? Stanley has the money. He'll get the license, Morita shook his head, but even he had to admit he was worried. The phone rang, and Lee nearly tripled over himself, jumping to the receiver. The two crowded together as Morita sat, straining to hear Stanley's voice or the tinny roar of the background noise. <coughs> uh... It's done, Stanley said triumphantly. We have the license, we have the money to spare. Lee silently pumped his fist in the air. Marita smiled before Lee handed the receiver to him. Congratulations, Stanley. Macau's yours. Unfortunately, Stanley breathed. Yokoi and the others weren't so kindly as to simply hand over everything to us. Marita's brow furrowed. Why? What do you mean? Yokoi objected to the said results like running a dog he is. But Stanley is stone darkened. He said he let get the let go to review the license. No sense giving to the Chinese wastrels and their useful idiots or something like that. Did he now, Marita said, his fish dropping venomously. If he wants to fight, let's give him one. Oh boy. All right, so be it. Fire, fire, fire. So we have something here already. So this one, increase try control the state by 2.5%, which kind of sucks, which I want to kind of actually lower, which is not good. But we get more GDP growth, which is good. Uh, okay. Remove Stanley Hill's monthly corruption gain. Oh. There we go. That's what I wanted to see as well. 5% um, quality. Well, we have 12, 12 days, so then we're done. We're done with this one. And we're here at 80%, 90%. We haven't hit the cap yet. Um, the equal here, we gotta work on the triads, though. We should have done this stuff first and then do this one, but whatever. And a, and a bit of commission. The brown old saying men will, will, will make a uh, quick yen for far longer than other men will resist it, and so his continued preeminence in the legislative legislation council is by no means a certainty. Disaster may strike the chief executive, or other circumstances may align so he leaves office earlier than is due. As crusades screeches to a halt, a man's persis persistence will nip at his nudges, or render its opponent enough through a thousand cuts until Marita's successor dismantles it entirely. Men independent of the chief executive decree are not so vulnerable. In fact, a commission mandated to investigate government corruption will perpetuate, perpetuate themselves in a place so rife when it's, as Guangdong. They will spot the grime and cracks neither Morita nor Lee can spot. Part misdoers from their money without the chief executive ever lifting a finger. When feared by many and asked for to none, an independent commission is the most resilient weapon the government will ever have against human nature. Which begs one question, do dogs ever bite the hand that feeds them? Tactical measures aren't enough to root out corruption on a prolonged basis. Take some action to institutionalize anti-corruption measures in Guangdong. It will be held soon after this foresight is taken. Ensure that we have enough support in the Legislative Council or suffer the consequences. Bring him in a line. Stanley Ho was agitated and that much Morita could see. And he could also see why. Ho had a lot of riding on the new casino licensing law passing through the Legislative Council. 
was not happy with the news that certain legislators within the Sony and Chong Kong faction were shying away from voting for it. A person in Murdy's office impassionately argued his case for minutes on end. Just what did you ask? What did you suggest I do, Stanley? Murdy finally said, interrupting Ho's ranting. Ho stopped, seemingly surprised at the question. Isn't it obvious? Bribe them. Murdy bristled at the boldness of the request, but he had to acknowledge that Ho had a point, of course. It would be the simplest way to wrangle his faction back in line, but it was really worth engaging in such blatant corruption. Stanley, that's not how we operate. All right, fine. Here's discipline in Sony Chung Kong ranks for the bill. Honestly, we do that. We still have, should have, we should we should should have enough in the Are end. Are you sure, Matsushita? A simple promise that you will keep. Uh, it's all I need. Matsushita's signature was a wry smile rested upon his lips. His hair, his not it was nicely kept. His nails, extremely cleanly trimmed, his suit nearly neatly pressed. All that is necessary for playing the part of a professional and adept business person. Murita tapped a finger against his desk, his stern expression standing in clear contrast with a seemingly welcoming one of Matsushita's. Is continued operation of your casino still that important to you? Surely it wouldn't it leave any dent in your wallet or hamper your operations? Why be so insistent? Murita asked, occasionally peering down the contents of the proposed ordinance. Why would it not be important? It's part of my business, is it not? So I simply want assurances that this proposal won't jeopardize my interests. It's not really that big of an ask, Matsushita maintained his calm and orderly demeanor, shifting slightly in his seat to a more comfortable and yet assertive position. What do I have to, what do you have to lose? The license assures that your representatives in Macau will secure the majority of the market and my business is of minimal concern to your stability. Murdy could see right through the approachable facade put on by Matsushita. It had been so far too many times to be fooled by it. The profits from his casinos could definitely be funneled back to the Mahome Islands, instead of being used to stimulate Guangdong's internal economy, hampering growth. However, he is right that Matsushita's operations would not drastically affect anything, and more support for the ordinance would certainly be more welcome. Matsushita t gently tapped on his wristwatch. Time is flowing, my friend. I suggest you take it. No, nothing much to lose. Make the promise. Mm, nah, we're good. Because we still have this here, too. So... We have 55 votes, so I'm not so concerned. Someone says, please get, from the comments, please get the best Sony path possible. So yeah, we'll try to. The TC1010 tape recorder. Out of the days of bulky vinyl records and tape reels, the avenue cassette tapes allowed hours of radio or, or audio to be stored into a desk drawer, quickly making them massively popular with the public. The main drawback up to this point has been the fact that audio must first be recorded on some other medium and transferred, as there's no way to record audio directly onto a cassette. Sony has now a solution to their, in their TC1010 a 10, 10 tape recorder using a cassette input and electric mo microphone it allows for the recording of crisp audio with minimal stack perhaps for perfect for journalists and police interrogators a recording studio in your pocket get more chong kong seats two more sony seats some really very good growth increases japan's approval by almost five percent beautiful someone asked in one of the comments what i just said like please get the best path for a guangdong or best path for sony really um the person replied saying it's what I'm doing, Mr. Mokolov, are doing right now, would lead him to get the best Sony path? Hopefully. So they hope so. Good. Nice. Oh, go shoot decreases Chinese government support. Ooh. We marketed towards Japan, so. C'est la vie, bride Fujitsu. The man standing before the chief executive, Marita Keo, taking care to disguise their affiliations. Some arrive hours arriving, arriving hours before the scheduled uh, appointment. And there are those darting the government complex seconds before designated time. Nobody wore the legal uh, lapel pen that the hallmark of any self-respecting corporate executive. Um, I read this before, actually. Actually, I have read this one before, so Fujitsu, we don't need him. We really, literally don't need him. They're on the table. Oh. Oh, desperate measures? Nah, we're good. No longer was Morita a KL force to be content to deal with intermediaries and middle managers. Sony's success spoke for itself, loudly not to send the big wigs scrambling out of the world works. Across from him sat the chiefs of Mitsubishi and Toshiba, whose business says Morita was currently attacking through a policy of ruthless cutthroat competition. A trusted source inside Toshiba had even informed Morita that the repugnant and bald man from his first encounter from with the Zaibatsu had been made redundant some weeks ago. Needless to say, there were plenty of glowering, glowering faces in that room. Morita was enjoying it all immensely. Good afternoon, gentlemen, he began. I trust that you made it here safely. I understand it's rare these days that you make business trips personally. Morita's barb had the desired effect, immediately turning up the heat in the room by a few degrees. It was true, these men had not had to deal with serious competition for a very long time, particularly not the old walrus from Mitsubishi. Even if a potential rival did arise, Zaibatsu's superior political connections were usually enough to squash the danger. But despite all the artificial roadblocks that Zaibatsu were desperately throwing in its path, Sony was on the footfront. The simple, unavoidable logic of the free market ultimately triumphed. Cheaper and better goods meant more for him and less for them. Indeed, Morita, the Toshiba ch uh, chief, replied through the gritted teeth, Shall we begin? Morita nodded. Our work pays, even in Japan. We've exhausted special opportunities for this market, which sucks. Look how much we got done. Amazing. An independent commission? Uh, I didn't read this one before. Um, I might have. 
To borrow an old saying, men want to make a quick yarn for far longer than other men will resist it, and so his continued preeminence in the legislation council is no by means of certainty. Disaster may strike the chief executive or other circumstances may align so he leaves the office earlier than is due. Well, I'd probably have this rest one. As the crusade screeches to a halt, this man's persistence will nip at its edges, render it impotent through a thousand cuts until Meridi's successor dismantles it entirely. Men are independent of the chief executive's decree, not so vulnerable. And in fact, a commission uh, mandated to investigate the corruption, government corruption, I should say, will perpetuate themselves in a place so rife with it as Guangdong. Though those but the grime and the cracks neither Meridi nor Li can spot, part misdoers from the money without the chief executive even lifting a ever lifting a finger. When feared by many and asked to none, an independent commission is the most resilient weapon the government will ever have, uh, have against human nature. Which begs one question, do dogs ever bite the hand that feed them? Maybe. Follow the money. You are under investigation, Chief Yamantani, Police Commissioner Omori. Address a lone bureaucrat sitting a ramrod across from the desk, across from himself in Li Kishin. But the, bureau, the Chief Executive has authorized financial audits of the civil service. We have to get our house in order. <laughs> the audits are not public. You need to know that there may be disruptions to your section's work, Li continued, smiling. Yamantani, hands folded neatly on his knees, his comb over not a millimeter out of order, nodded sagely, even as a bead of sweat trickled down his neck. Crap, 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 Yama Yamatani mumbled, fighting to keep his foot from fidgeting as he surveyed the land of the depositors ahead of him. He was an idiot, everything under his name was clean, and he waited a few days after a more in his lease notice before making his move, but he couldn't help but have Lee leave loose end. He had to close the books. How can I help you, mister? The bank teller looked up, smiling. Yamatani uh, felt the cloying heat of the street sticking to its back, his sweat drenching his shirt. Kakimoto, I'm Kakimoto Shingo, and I need you to close my accounts. I'll be right with you. The teller's eyes widened and she rose, backing away as footsteps approached. Section Chief Yamant Yamatani, you're under arrest. A pair of arms uh, bent Yamatani's arms behind his back and wrestled him down against the counter. But why, Yamatani? Yamatani pr protested. A chill running up his climbing spine. I've done nothing wrong here. Yes, but you were going to. Let's open those books, shall we? Passage of the casino license bill. The vote on the matter of essentially handing Guangdong's underworld over to Stanley Hill was went smoothly despite the desperate efforts of Yokoi's assi assorted legislative council at sycophants to disrupt the hearings. This is not for lack of trying on their part. Some of them shouted during proceedings. Racial slurs, of course, yum. Uh, regular profanity, sports slogans, outright gibberish, nothing was off limits. A few hostile echo members even tried to read out long pieces of classical literature, such as the Hagakura, the I Ching, or the Thousand Charter, a classic in hope of filibustering the proceedings after the American and British style. One particularly fanatical legislator resorted to reading the most recent chapter of Astro Boy aloud. Funny all to Morita's mind was that were the two different attitudes to call, or attempts to call in a bomb scare that forced brief evacuations not longer than 30 minutes between them. Cool. But it wasn't enough. The vote went through. With favorable result, Hokoi Hideke was utterly defeated. His operations were not merely weakening, weakened, but hamstrung, and Stanley Hill was now able to run the underworld legitimately. After the vote, Stanley Lee, Stanley, Lee and Marita, joined by various loyalists, sat down for dinner and a drink and broke out a bottle of wine to celebrate the continued prosperity and, just as important, the safety of Guangdong by the hands alone. They celebrated hard that night, but they knew that Guangdong would be their oyster forever. Prosperity they shouted as glasses clinked. More uh, track control, which sucks. Uh, but state modifier removes Stanley Hill's monthly corruption gain. Nice. Well, we got it done. 26% enough. Too high. There you go. A clean start. A civil servant's words work for the people. The police protect them in the sun, and we can only hope that Stanley Hill's associates will protect them in the dark. Well, we must pers preserve some freedom of action for ourselves, and the power of games of uh, boardroom politics surrounding the chief executive's office will never truly disappear, of course. <coughs> Uh, we have but a security apparatus in Guangdong that we, can tr w that we can trust will fulfill its public duties after we are long gone. Beautiful. And the says, with Guangdong becoming better by the day, reforming security will be your last task for the day. However, be prepared for the oil crisis because rods will eventually spread across the country and you have to painfully deal with them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we got rid of the Yakuza here, huh? We're 11 away from them. We're 13 away from them, and we're really freaking far away from them. Now we're 9. Setting boundaries. It wouldn't be enough to declare a campaign against corruption and nab a few suspects and call it a day. For Marita's talk about cleaning house to be merciful m merciful or m meaningful, there need to be something more permanent, but the devil would be in the details. Li Kuxing, Stanley Ho, and Commissioner Mori, the only ones Marita trusted on this, have become arguing in circles. Even the shadows of Marita's office began to lengthen until it ringing or ringed in ochre light. And any kind of expansive or statutory body can be bought or twisted by anyone with deep pockets, that is. Anyone who's anybody here. Stanley warmed, <coughs> cufflinks, uh, flashing as he gesticulated grandly. Any anti-corruption team needs to be nimble, and so only to the chief executive in an advisory capacity. Perhaps the tycoons of the five companies, too, if they fear overreach. I'll get him on board. That'll solve nothing, Lee said, rolling his eyes, without a formal mandate as inspector general and the resources to actually chase leads. And if we want the Leco to sign off on either, they will ask for a collective oversight. I'll leave politics up to you three. Don't pay me 
uh, to get involved here. What I'm paid to do is to get results, Amori hopped, crossing his arms, and unless you have a completely independent commission, I guarantee you that best of interest will make your efforts be in vain. Funny, it took some effort to get you to come around to having me in the room. Some about my connection, Stanley fired back. How do we know this commission will be any different? A small, uncontroversial advisory council will be prompted to let go. This is right, we need Inspector General. Let go's permission to create the Inspector General position, promising an oversight in exchange for votes. Let go be asked to vote in forming an independent commission against corruption, and they'll be better getting get with the program. Oh, crap. Um... Well, we just spent our political power, too, which is not good, but, uh... Uh-huh. Independent commission... I mean, we have to go that way, right? But happy October, everybody! As we do finish our coffee. Alright, let's take a look-see here. 29 days, if you do this, um, we can do 1, 2, 3, wow, 100% capped, it's not bad, that's actually really good, uh, we might need to re readjust how we were supposed to do this, but I uh, dare to dream. Today, the people of Guangdong wake up to something new, a sense of safety and belonging. For the first time in years, Guangdong's people march to work, not as the indentured servants of the five companies, but as members of something greater, a fledgling society and culture, taking root in the Pearl River Delta. More importantly, they know what, who to think, who to thank, and mo who to pay, and their gratitude. They live in Hong Kong properties, buy food from Hong Kong supermarkets, use technologies developed by Sony Electronics, while borrowing money from Sony's bankers to pay for the utilities provided by Sony Power Plants. Leave from Rita and Lee's hands and thank us for it. Oh is as we once dreamed it, and we will not uh, see this dream taken away from the people and from us. A crowd of stragglers. Morita and Lee stared out of the office window, gazing upon their tapestry of lights and flashing colors of the lively city below. The reflection of the glass portrayed two minds of contemplation, weighing their options as they continue to charge to the political mire. You do know that this ordinance regarding corruption has concerned many for a reason, right? Lee muttered as he placed a hand within his pocket of his blazer. Mm hmm. Everybody has something to hide. Something dirty they did at one point or another. Can't expect everyone to be clean, Marita briefly tilted his head upwards towards the pitch black uh, sky. Getting backing for this one is going to be challenging. We don't even have stable support from our own base of people. Can't really expect to attract outsiders when we can't even secure our own quarter. Unless we want this ordinance to slam directly into a brick wall and shatter itself. We better consider some methods of incentivization. Corruption is always seen as something irreprehensible. Perhaps a little guilt will do us as well. An airplane cut through the dark clouds, as blinking lights towards the tow towering over the skyline. If that doesn't work, then there's always a kill to profit. But our dividends could sound good. Something turning towards Lee, Marita's eyes widen. Everybody has something to hide. We could weaponize them. If they're exposed and perhaps prosecute them for their past misdeeds, it would go towards co combating corruption, would it not? Ideas were in the air. Whether they would be executed, though, is another question. Ethics are within us. How could you not condemn corruption? How many seats do we have? We're going to be corrupt trying to get this passed. We get the following bonuses. Nothing else. Must have choose price. Um, uh, Matsushita was giving Marita a sympathetic look, which made him uneasy. I've done everything I can, Matsushita said. It certainly looked like he'd been hard at work with his shirt wrinkled and bag under his eyes. Of course, it all be, could be for show. They just won't budge, Matsushita continued. Marita sighed. You can't even just guarantee all the votes of your own fac faction? Fiction. Faction? Matsushita shrugged. I can't control everything they do. I can only offer them incentives. And the only incentive they'll accept for this bill is cash. Mirita pushed his glasses on his desk and rubbed his eyes. So you're saying to my, pass my anti-corruption measures, I need to directly bribe public officials? Matsushita shrugged. That's about the size of it. It's not bad, but 7% is quite a bit. But you know what? Bribing your own people? We, how did only 27 or 37 in total like vote for it from Sony? Come on, guys. Bruh. Do better. Fujitsu's clean man. Oh, obviously, in your outreach to book himself is out of the question, Marita began. Across the desk, Stanley Ho nodded, but he said, picking up a few pieces of paper out of the pile he was sifting through, there are a few men under his employ who may feel otherwise. Ho laid the papers out on his desk. There are reports on various Fujitsu employees who reported indicated that expressed sympathies for greater state oversight. We can reach out to these men, uh, apply a bit of pressure, Ho shrugged, to get you a few more votes. At the risk of Ibuka finding out we're going right under his nose, Ho shrugged, nothing ventured. More money be directed, redirected to the computation of power. No, oh, we're good. Lower try its support potentially, but I don't want to lower us too much. It gives it more corruption. Let's just 
Trying to do it this way is not very good. Um, 76%. Well, out to Hitachi. You can't be seriously insinuating that this is a good deal. Lee Tain is facing confusion and displeasure. When I place originally bond Morita's desk, you're actually suggesting we bargain with Hitachi? Consider it, Morita kept his gaze averted from Lee's indignant expression, focusing on the calculations laid before him. If it means getting this ordinance passed, which directly benefits the cause and progresses our objectives, why not secure more support? Lee's eyes switch as he opened his mouth. Because their interests are di diametrically opposed to ours. By pleading for their backing, we're putting ourselves in a disadvantageous position. Not to mention the amount of demands they certainly will make of us that wouldn't that hamper our efforts? Lee's argument was convincing. Hitachi's practices are unscrupulous and entirely opportunistic. Securing the sport would be an uphill battle for all the losses. The question is whether he'd be willing to uh, sacrifice certain interests to secure ordinances passing. Additionally, it may seem like the corporation or cooperation with Hitachi would also be including concluding with agents of Manjuko, which also would be absolutely counterintuitive to an extent. He leaned back in his chair. While he had made good points, he was not yet completely confident in the success of the ordinance. Perhaps working together once with a rival would bring benefits in the long term, and it certainly ensures immediate interest in the ordinance getting carried through. Forget it. I'm willing to do it. This ordinance must be passed. Give him one more seat. 0.7 billion. At 15% more seats to Hitachi. And 9% more corruption. Wow. That's insane to, to actually do that, but we're doing okay for now. Um, two, over 2% two is good. So you can see here. Today, not bad. And a clean start. As it is only October, we have 20% real GDP growth. We need, I think, 55 billion or so. It's gonna be, gonna be kind of tight to do that, but we'll do the best we can. And we're still over here too. At this point, just just end the war. Clean start. Neither order nor progress. Lee Chun saw yet another line in front of yet another checkpoint and was not impressed. As always, it was manned by both the police and the camp by Tai Scum. <clears throat> there are spewing some nonsense about a dangerous criminal being on the loose when they stop people, but who really knew what the reality was? And a half decade, Chun thought as he outflanked the checkpoint, not a darn thing has changed, nothing at all. Watching a police officer help an old lady who had fallen on the street, he continues his internal monologue. So what if there's one or two good eggs in the police service? There are only one or two good eggs in the police service when they got here. Why has that number increased? Chin Grimace as he passed by a gangster are bringing in bribes of money from a protection racket. Good governance, law and order, BS. What's that mean if the gangs and criminals are still run over all the place and corruption and bribes are still a thing? He rolled his eyes watching a senior police officer meekly taking orders from a Kempa Tai lieutenant. Independence, how rich. They're still puppets of the Kempa Tai, can't even issue a speeding ticket without them. As Chun entered his workplace, he concluded, I might award the police points for trying, but it's not even close to enough. At the end of the day, the police are running dogs of the corporates and the Japanese. They can't do the job correctly, even if, it, if somebody holds a gun to their forehead. At that moment, his boss called out to him, so Chun stopped thinking about it all and went to talk with him. No point wasting my time thinking about useless rice buckets and blue uniforms. Passage of the ICAC Ordinance The anti-corruption crusade of the Guangdong State Faction, a great victory today, as Chief Executive Morita's proposed ICAC bill was passed despite a vigorous campaign on the start on the part of the Ibuka, Masaru, Fujitsu, and ruthless coordinated opposition from the Hitachi delegation. As the debate neared it, near it end, its end, Ibuka went on to Jeremiah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's presumptuous, or presumption piled upon presumption for the chief executive to think that he somehow has the right to audit or dictate what the companies are doing. Such an idea is disruptive, foolhardy, and disastrous. The corporations of Guangdong proper prosper precisely because they're free from the overbearing government interference of the sort of the ones the sort one finds in Japan or America or Germany. To counteract this argument, Marita and Lee argued at the hilt that the proposal was only the honest proposal to counteract Guangdong's endemic corruption amidst a pandemonium. Set up by this kind of argument, the bill is put to a vote and passed. It book now incandescent with rage started running again. Darn you to heck, Marita. You probably bribed everyone to vote for the stupid law. You dude, you've unleashed forces you don't understand. No one in this darn city is entirely innocent. Including us. Marita scoffed at Ibuka, but Lee looked somewhat concerned. He feared that Ibuka had a point and that the ICAC might yeah, blow up in everyone's faces. A great victory regardless. Advancements in audiovisual technology, what's not to love? As Yemen is burning, and Iraq will start will continue, start to burn too. Oh, I love it. Hey, over 4 billion. And finally, thank god that part is over. Is that the end of the warp? Oh, it is. In, oh, thank god. Inspection. Oh, oh, there goes Oman. So we didn't get anything for even helping him out. We should get something, right? Besides a, a sense of pride and accomplishment. The other side's a change. Yasukawa and Yoshiko's, uh, Yoshiko and Hasaya Hayashi Kosen met up at a restaurant in the middle class district of Koshu. The matter being discussed was, of course, the recently passed ICAC bill, which had attracted the attention of everyone in Guangdong for the first to reaches of Guangxi to the shores of Kowloon. After getting some lunch and two cups of tea to wash it down, they started talking. So, what do you think about it, Officer Hayashi? The new ICAC ordinance, or whatever they're calling it, I think it's caused for some cautious optimism. It seems like the executives are actually putting their money where their mouths are on fighting corruption. 
Yoshi's brow furrowed in concern, and his words dampened Yoshiko's enthusiasm. Freddy can't share your optimism, Miss Yasukawa. I worry this ICAC of theirs is an overcorrection. No, too strong, too aggressive. I actually fear it might cause more grief than it's worth. Yoshiko's confused. Why is that? Isn't fighting corruption in an unbiased manner a good thing? Hayashi nodded. Yes, it is. You're 100% right on that. But the problem is that giving the power of enforcement to another organization with little to no oversight is going to cause internal strife. It's already it already is over at the police. I have it on good authority that many of the commissioner of Mori's lieutenants are complaining quite vigorously about the matter. Yoshiko nodded appreciatively. That's so. Yeah, I'll worry. I'll spread further. Oh, crap, and here we go. I just want to dare to dream first, please. I want to dare to dream. Mr. Division's back, I guess. Don't crisis me yet. I want to finish the thing. I have a feeling we're going to need more political power, so I don't want to do this, but I kind of want to do it anyways. Nice. Let me dare to dream. No. No, the ICAC at work. As the ICAC worked its way to a functional, relatively unpretentious office in Koshu, the new commissioner, Kamino Satoshi, contemplated how he got to where he was. Back when he worked in the great and terrible metropolis that was Tokyo, he had been known for his incorruptibility, so much so, in fact, that when his classmate at the Police Academy, Police Commissioner Amori of Guangdong, asked about the possible candidates for an anti corruption commission, his name came up in 50 people's recommendations. His men, too, were handpicked by the commissioner from Japanese, Zhujin, and even native Chinese officers, known for their resistance to corruption. Now that quality was in action as it began the first major investigation. The commissioner's third in command, a sturdy and stoic Chinese officer known as Sui Man Hui, got his attention. Commissioner, we've got a summary of the situation for you to look at. Kamino nodded and took his paper, Sui handed to him, and described a major drug smuggling ring organized to Kamino's visible disgust by corrupt members of the police. Looking at Sui, he nodded, go ahead. Over the next few days, the ICAC will work quickly and efficiently, completely insinuated from the Legislative Council's prying eyes and freed from even the slightest external influence. Morita K had no idea of this until Morito Khan, Mori, Mor, Mor, Mori Khan, put an ICAC report on his desk. Please, let us get to this first. I want to get to it first. We have 13 days left. Okay, aftershocks. Even if the fires in the Middle Eastern oil fields were a world away from Guangdong, the effects were so palpable and immediate. Plastics, the one material that's so useful for insinuating electronics and absorbing the heat generated by Guangdong's myriad product catalog. When the flow of oil stopped, the hoarding began, first by the companies that could see the storm approaching, and then by the average consumer, when the average price had risen threefold. Scarcity, when mixed with fear and uncertainty, proves highly combustible. As the plastic sh uh, shock spread from the commodities trading floors to boardrooms to living rooms, rumors spread about what would disappear next. Food? Clothing? Stationaries? Men and women alike flooded their local supermarkets and corner shops seeking to buy in bulk anything that would provide them some security. Better now they reason, well the price was right. It was a frenzy and a feeling of world coming undone. Above them. Soon executives furrow their brows and suck their teeth at the projected losses, the writing flowing, uh, filling row after row on the ledger's projected on solidarity screens, cost overruns, falling demands, undershot targets, the numbers all told a similar single story, and they have braced themselves for difficult times to come. Far beyond the confines of Guangdong, bureaucrats and politicians skittered through the hallways of power in Tokyo, as unsettled by the oil crisis as a compatriot in Koshu. With a bigger picture in mind, they concern themselves with how best to serve Japan's interests, leaving Guangdong far behind. Another decade, another disaster in the Pearl River. The patience of the Empire of Japan and the Japanese expatriates in Seoul and Chung Kong runs thin. We've also oil crisis in the Silicon Delta. The ICIC report. A report from Commissioner uh, Kamino Satoshi's ICAC had come out in the blue one fine day. Neither Mori Khan nor any of his subordinates had expected something as total as a document that it read. Needless to say, Mori said, this is a matter for the chief executive. Said chief executive was having a pleasant conversation with Lee Kishin and Matsushita Masaharu when all of a sudden series of staccato knocks were heard at the door. Who is it? As a Mori Khan chief executive with Stanley Ho, something came from ICAC. It's big. Murita jumped up and rushed to the door, opening it to finance minister, finance minister and the bemused, bemused uh, police commissioner. Amori was holding a thick dossier in his hands. Going to the table and reading over the dossier, they were surprised by the ruthlessness and the wide scope of the police organized drug ring and communist plans to do away with it. The ICAC did not plan to stop arresting rank and file officers, nor they arrest a Chinese in Zhujin. No, they plan to arrest a senior Japanese investigator at the station, a man called Sagawa. They plan to move on in the next few days. The men at the table thought about doing something, but they remembered that the ICAC bill had enshrined its independence in a law. There was nothing they could do. With that in mind, the four ministers and one officer shrugged, but they put the reports aside and went back to talking. The conversation returned to its previous pleasantries. Oh boy. I still want to make this place better. Um. Research speed is what? Could be better, right? That's right. Nothing else there. Uh, honestly, with these guys at 99%, can we meet with the change representatives? It might be worth it, it might not be. God, I don't like the oil crisis. <coughs> Japan was going to be hit very hard. Japan has been hit by these huge crises and all sorts of crises. It must not be fun to be being the Empire of Japan in this, at this time. Just get this one done first. I 
unusually genial. Now the tribes control these states, uh, rings here. It's in an advantageous position, I'm told. A base for smuggling limit, uh, illicit drugs or substances into the rest of the city is at an exorbitant rate. Marita uh, Kale traces his finger across the map from one side of the urban grid to another, lays a circle in a swath of high rise apartments. Across from him, Tashe Wong, uh, uh, watching him passively, light from the desk lamp shutting off his glasses. The Yakuza would love to cut into that territory. I'm sure they would try, but sure they gained the ability to. Of course, the Attache commented, taking a moment to adjust in a seat. In the end, however, the priority would be to reassert government control in the area, yes? Yeah, so it would take quite the effort, though. I'm, if, I, if I ordered the police to try today, they'd be shot to pieces. They would need more funding, the two men spoke as one, then glanced at each other. The chief executive suppressed a laugh, a difficult feat for as unprofessional as it was. This may have been the first time that he and Wang had ever actually agreed upon the course of action. Or on anything for that matter, really. Very well then, Atache Wong stood up. I shall inform the Consul General of our discussion. Shall we schedule a meeting for next week? Morita Akeo resisted the urge to make a witty comment about how this was the first time in his life that he ever actually wanted a follow up meeting with Wang. I'll get my secretary on it at once. So, like 3%. I don't want to spend more political power, but more growth would be probably pretty good. Um, oh, that's pretty good too, though. Hmm. You get 25 more political power, though. Political power, a product, a growth. Mm, we're gonna need that growth, but that political power we might we might need political power, maybe I'm not sure. Um product maybe. We're gonna go with political power. Let's play it safe. The ICAC on the march. Right, we're, we're literally at hundred percent now, holy crap. <coughs> wow. Lam Hyun Xion looked with some worried his colleague, the one Chan Kai Kui by his name, who was visibly shaken after having just left the office of the ICAC had set up in his precinct. What they do to you all, Kui? Chen sighed and shook his head. Ah, darn it, they pulled me aside for questioning for the last time today. Lam nodded slightly in understanding. I see, what was that like? Chen sighed again. They kept bringing up random old case files and pointing things in them out to me. They wanted me to talk about my other colleagues, and they kept on badgering me. It was annoying at the best and exhausting at worst, almost torture at times. Lam was curious now, so, were they, so then did you talk? At that, his friend threw up his hands and feet. Talk, of course I talked. I'd rather not get arrested by Camino in the slot. Lam nodded in understanding until he realized he had another question. Wait a minute, Akui, if they badger you and talking about your colleagues, why are you telling me about all this? Chan sighed, shook his head, spread his hands, and made a sad little smile. You're the only one I'm fairly sure is clean out of our whole lot. Man, I understand the situation a bit more, Lam nodded. As it turns out, Akui, you're right. They didn't bother me at all. Please get it done. Come on, come on, come on. Get her done first. <clears throat> Luck, fate, and hard work. Okay. Whew, at least we got that one. Oh, sh Nikes. Shock to the system. The argument pulled out from under us. Tokyo once again disconnected one of our vital streams of capital and once again pushed us from the nest that was a co-prosperity sphere. The only vital tool Marita needed to continue his experiment of enlightened self-interest. The con has been set in a state of panic. Prices of most goods, especially raw materials and consumer goods, have soared to previously unfathomable heights in unseen in Guangdong beforehand, or having impact assistance that companies alike chose to limit their spendings and save up cash. The productivity economy and government of Guangdong has fallen through, but Marita has already come this far. As Guangdong convulses, the world looks at Marita to walk the talk. Oh, crap. Look, fade and hard work. Chief Executive Marita tapped the microphone twice, wrapping his fingers barely audible in the darkened uh, auditorium. Outside the spotlight's glare, he could see Sony product engineers mingling with Chung Kong sales executives, saying a tale was laden with Cantonese delicacies, while secretaries guided honored clients to pay tribute to their corporate patrons. Uh, as Marita called the assembly to order, remember the uh, similar party? Uh, celebrating the appointment as chief executive. He felt exposed in the cabinet's hall as cohort of Sony Chung Kong lieutenants unable to fill the space despite the exuberant revelry. Now the auditorium felt claustrophobic. The walls barely containing a suit of armor within despite the decorous bows and muted conversation. Behind him, those are the same lieutenants, the inner circle of executives and personal acquaintances surrounding Marita Kao and Li Kaxing. Flanked him on both sides, raising their glasses in unison as they, his address concluded. Li Kaxing and Stanley Hill both stepped forward and clinked their champagne glasses against Marita's own. First to be forwarding the honor amongst their enlightened cabal, the new reigning case, cast of Guangdong. Hours later, Lee and Marita uncorked their own bottle, the corks pop echoing the deserted room. Two early lowered themselves onto the empty stools, watching the lights of Port Shore and Kowloon twinkling in the dark. From the alleys of Hong Kong to becoming Takuns, the chief executive to this, our home, Marita ventured. Loosening his side, was it luck or was it fate? I believe in fortune, but I don't believe in fate, Lee admonished, wiping his glasses. We had nothing, we had nothing else to lose, Kale. A castaway from Japan and a factory owner. We had a chance, we seized it, we had to work for the rest, and. I'd sooner die than give up any of this. Oil crusts and silicon dust. Holy shit, Nikes. Whoa, that's so bad. We get more miscellaneous income, I guess, but. Holy crap. We're actually looking really good at the cult cu culture of corruption. It's not terrible. We still 3.4% real growth. We have a tiny bit of surplus. 
Inflation's sky high. Holy crap. Or 12%, huh? Once again, alone. It seems the crisis that affected our jobs has been affected in much the same way as us. Communication has been cut, much like a precious funding. It seems that we'll have to make do with the current tools at our disposal. Our issues are plain. The government itself must be sustained at all costs, but the private sector must be maintained too. Most companies are currently unable to adjust to our price inflated economy, and as it stands, we're begging for government intervention. We'll not leave them out to dry. We'll call on Tokyo to not answer. What tomorrow brings? <clears throat> The least family moorings at Brighton. The rice was new, the vegetables fresh, and some form of meat every day. Whatever was left was handed over to Hay and Y and stamped in ten, lunch tin boxes. Uh, even if they could, couldn't assume the, the canteen fees at the government school, they would eat enough to not fall behind. Should know the day would be harder. Despite better pay and shorter hours, the work was still backbreaking. The worst supervisors found excuses to cut corners out of sight of the better ones. It still resented the random police patrol sweeping Chinese neighborhoods, but it could suffer most indignities if he knew that Y and Hay would have a future. The government will expand schools and ensure widespread secondary educational attainment. Lamb shook his head at the radio broadcast. Lofty dreams and opt opt optimistic deadlines, all un unattainable. Even the tycoons grew richer and less accountable each year. But he couldn't bring himself to say it out loud. It surprised him. The cynic abandoned any cynicism? He wondered how much he dared hope, even as a per growing purpose in his stride said what he did not con consciously acknowledge. Yoshiko felt her con consciousness drifting from her assembled Japanese madams and their husbands, milling about in the rare private function she was still invited to. They were preening over Tokyo's trends, their discussion of profits, and their tirades against China's indolence and exuding inferiority. All of that ceased to interest her, both tritely, inconsequential, and deeply mistaken in the face of what she had seen. She rose to leave, and she knew a few would mock her for going native, and she did not care. So the nation changed to meet its future and police complaints. Masashita Masaharu's mood did not match the storminess. storminess of the weather in Guangdong that day, however. He was still quite concerned about the way things were going over this new ICAC and its commissioner Camino. Well, those concerns were reinforced by the reports which had been brought to his attention as the Interior Secretary, which he was now uh, reading after the Chief Executive and Li Keqing, joined as they often were by Commissioner Mo Amori. The police, the rank and file commissioner, are not your lieutenants. They are all fine, all are lodging serious complaints of the ICAC created by the government and enforced by Commissioner Kamino Satoshi as making the job impossible to do. Muri nodded, how precisely is it creating difficulties, Mr. Matsushita? Matsushita turned over a page and read out the pertinent section. Since the ICAC began its mass investigations, large swaths of the police have been descended into a morass of infighting. There's still so much mutual suspicion and rivalry blowing over that is distracting every officer from his actual job. At this, Lee looked concerned. Amori's face was inscrutable. Morita's brow furrowed in thought. The way the... Uh, Mori Matsushita saw Murita had two options first. He could call on the commissioner <coughs> uh, and Kamino to tell him to get on with it, which would allow him in the cabinet to meet this man and see what he's up to. Second, he'd let the ICIC do his job. While it would no doubt worsen the police infighting, uh, it would set a commendable example in the fight against corruption, which, make no mistake, Matsushita hated too. In the end, Murita decided call and get, get on with it. Not interfere and let the ICIC go on with his work. Not let the masters at work. Uh huh. Let it do its job. Uh, I don't know. Please complaints. Hmm. Bring in the big guns. Let's call them in. More of the same. Hey, half sleep walked the meandering route to school. Traverse and Koshi's many intersections with the shades of neon signs hanging unlit above the street. Or unlit. His mind wandered elsewhere to sketches of a bridge of an electrical circuit of airflow diagrams sketched hurriedly in notebook margins. They are incomplete, imitations of drawings in LFC journals at a secondary school's library. Hey, you're spacing out. Why pinched her older brother's arm, trying to elicit a response on the increasingly silent morning journeys. Mom and Dad are worried. Sorry, I didn't mean to, Hey, said half sincerely, adjusting his satchel, just not looking forward to class, that's all. Hey's mind wandered again as a sister, now in middle school, old enough to understand how much school meant to the Lee family, fixed Hay with a questioning stare. He couldn't bring himself to say the truth, he was bored to tears. It wasn't challenging the silence for the curriculum, a drip feed of arithmetic, letters and science. Subjects Hay could master in days, where his classmates took a month. But even as he roared for more, students insisted that everyone remain together, traveling down a set path without exception. What about that talk about a scholarship? Why didn't relent? Always the optimist. Didn't Chong Kong or so many people come by? Yeah, and I ended up working for them with, for the rest of my life, Hay sighed. I took the scholarship. But that all that means is that they own me, working for some Sony or Chong Kong Kong Cho's reliable cousin or talented son, claiming my work as their own. I don't want to be a cog in the machine. Let me be clear. That concludes our meeting then, time, Chief Executive. Unlike Consul General Song, Wang Jingzhu spared no pleasantries in his goodbyes. It was a blunt habit of his, born of the being a military man first, a policeman second, a pain in the butt third, and a diplomat somewhere around the 25th. Murta Kale grumbled to himself as he stood, wasting another another waste of time that he could have spent productively. Maybe with a businessman, or in the assembly, or the home watching TV, but anything but this. Actually, Chief Executive, I have one thing I'd like to say, Wang said suddenly. Marching across the room to block his path, I'd like to say a few words on my role in Guangdong. 
I believe I've gotten the gist of it, Attaché. Morito Kale murmured, attempting to sidestep him. Yes, I am a Attaché. My job involves the scope of the army, the consulate, the police, especially the police. I'm well familiar with their work. I'm displeased by its incompetence. Well, now, how would I like to make one thing very plain to you? Wayne cut him off again, his voice both flat and sharp. I do not have much tolerance for incompetent policemen. They chose to create the necessities you and I have. In the end, we all choose to, chose to be here. Make sure your men can keep up. And then he was gone, the door slamming shut behind him, leaving Mor Morito Akeo bemused, confused, and deeply unmused. Unamused. That man knows more than he should. Valuable clue about Wang Jingju's character. We may be able to find more. What if we did this one then? Good god, that's still so bad. A giant shock to the system. The right man for the job. Button cameras, wiretaps. Uh, oh my god. Expedited uh, warrants, near complete prosecutorial authority, as Morita's eyebrows arch, the head, the new head of the Independent Commission Against Corruption, Kamino Satoshi, stood ramrod straight, half his uniform is shadow from the perfect creases worked into crisp fabric. A college union reporter interacted with Morita initiated, not present me the sh shopping list, what exactly are you doing? Rooting out corruption, as IIC, ICAC's remit, Kamino replied briskly, a deep baritone brooking no hesitation. We've given the bureaucracy the notion or the notice to fall in line, and now we root out anyone who's not with the program. Even so, Matsushita ventured, raising his hand. We received complaints that your reg that regular work is being impeded. Can you explain your methods? Community didn't blink. Well, unlike ordinary crime, corruption hides in plain sight, using normal as a smoke screen and shield. As Matsushita struggled to respond to Kamino's forthright, zealous response, Morita, but that he understood why Commissioner Mori had brought with his, his colleagues from Tokyo, even to cause some friction within Guangdong's government apparatus. Much more needs to be done, Kamino continued. Given the depth of the problem, we either access the beast completely, or let it fester anew. Only an airtight case filled with evidence and the testimony of uh, turned witnesses will make a sufficient example for the rest of Guangdong. And for that, I need resources and the freedom to pursue whatever leads arise. Surgical precision is key. Slow motion. Now, I like how Suzuki felt. Murray did mutter, feeling his eyes drying out after hours of being immersed in the chaotic reports coming out of the Middle East. There's no avoiding what comes next. War, destruction, and worst of all, scarcity. The implications of the global oil shortage had already set Guangdong's investors on edge, with the share price of the five companies all taking minutes after the markets opened. Seas not seen since the implosion of Yasuda Holdings, a scene that neither Morita nor Lee had hoped to see repeated in their lifetimes. Lee knew that he would be delivering even worse news in the days to come. Even meant cloak and jargon of the production delays, skyrocketing input costs, and the cratering consumer demand. The forecast from government economists and his own in-house strategists were united on one point. There would be no stopping a second wave of layoffs and furloughs, necessary to save the greater whole, to keep the ship of state from sinking under the waves. Marita and Lee exchanged a haunted stare, a cold sweat trickling down their backs. They understood the necessity of what was to come, and they dreaded the cost to be paid and broken promises and betrayed hopes. Whatever trust we have now, Kale, Lee said hesitantly, we could lose in a heartbeat from both the populace and investors. We can't get this wrong. Easier said than done, Kashing, Marita exhaled sharply, but we've been defying the odds from day one. This? Just more of the same. The dreams would not die here, and unwelcome advice. I have noticed something about your cities, uh... Chief Executive, they're lawless under your direction. Without any sense of regime, uh, regiment, or order, contrast Gu Guangdong to Tokyo itself or Kyoto, or even a city like Hisiking. Those are cities in which disorder, criminality is an object of the past, and those who uh, violate the statutes of law are properly prosecuted. What can you tell me is the difference between the home islands and here? The staccato of the clock cut through the silence like knives through a blanket, drawing Murito Okeo's attention, uh, wary attention. Fifteen minutes in this impromptu interrogation, you realize that left an hour ago. Maybe more for the general and the man beside him to a needle at everything they could think of a sign. The camp by reach. Got it in one. Now it's Colonel Miyazaki's turn to speak. Something he seemed to relish in. Yes, you are you know, understanding, my man, I assure you. Are the best in the world, unceasing in their efforts to crush our enemies and protect Japan. Protecting Guangdong would be an extension of that effort, and yet while our men are so proficient in China and Manchukuo, and of course the home islands, you remain reticent. reticent. Murita Akio had hardly opened his mouth when Nagano leaped back into conversation, and we see now that your authority is undermined by criminals, foreign actors, communists, all sorts. Your police are not strong enough to contain them. All allow us to intervene. That was a darn t tone of voice he realized, that condensation, and it made his blood boil. His hand gripped the arm of his rest firmly as his jaw looked, locked, finally coming out to spit out. With all due respect, General, we have the harassment, save the harassment from our secretaries. I hear you truly. Please, continue with what you were saying. I just want to get to the shock to the system, but you know what? I think we'll probably end it there because we've gone on probably for long enough in this episode, in which the next one might be the last one. We might not, might not be. We'll see. Definitely. So, if you enjoyed the long video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what we can do about this here oil crisis. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.